Whatever you're Let's doing. find out. If I if I come over here and I say hi everybody, happy holidays, happy hollow days. Oh my god. If you understand my point. Let's find out. If I, I caught your drift. Over here and I say hi everybody, happy Oh, holidays, I can hear me. Hollow yeah. days. Can oh can God. they hear me? And they can hear you. They did it. Sorry, everybody. You just heard an echo. I was listening to the stream to make sure that you could hear us. Uh, <laughs> so, but we did it. We're here. Hi, hello, hello, Twitch, hello, YouTube. Uh, Twitch can see and hear you. Wonderful. What about the vacation? This uh, this is something that actually came up yesterday on the Discord a little bit uh, because I was you know chatting in the in our in our Adventures Night Discord chat, and you know sometimes. I need a break from family gatherings too. <laughs> yeah, this was not mandated. I mean, we would be the ones mandating it. And so, like, if we didn't want to stream, we, we didn't have to stream. Right. Jack said he was he exactly. wanted to stream Dark Souls one like day doing because uh, one, it's been a while since I've uh, been on stream. Uh, actually, mm -hmm. I, I looked at like the old stream setup in my OBS, and I had no recollection of doing that stream. Uh, so you, I think you did the Lords of the Fallen stream. That was the only one you host. Oh, no. Did you even host that? I have no concept. There was like one of the first streams we did was you, Nick, and Yahtzee. Could be. Yeah. That was the first stream ever on the internet, actually. On the internet? Um, yeah, wow. yeah. A lot of people don't know this, but second week of November, the first time anyone ever streamed on the internet. Wow, that's great. Yeah. I, I'm hearing I need to be a little louder. Excellent. And uh, Lord Reffa subbed on Prime. Guys. I didn't even realize I was set up, but that's great. <laughs> that's right. You can sub on, can Prime sub on Prime. Lord Reffa, thank you so much. It says 32 of 10 new sub goals. Don't know what that means, but I appreciate oh. it. Oh, 32 of 10 new sub goals. We will take that. That um, means I think we crushed it. If our goal was 10, and we're already at 32. Oh, then we crushed it. Yeah. Oh, we you know what I would actually, here's, here's what I'm going to do. Because, by the way, this is going to be a very casual stream. Uh, I don't mm -hmm. know if we're gonna go two hours, maybe longer. Maybe we might take breaks. Uh, mm -hmm. This we're gonna we're gonna it's it's ten o'clock in the morning here in Milwaukee. Uh, we are playing this very very casually. Here's something I would like to do, and I would like for us to set up in the future, which is uh, you know put a, put a little thing of what game we're playing. Um, oh, that's on great. The screen. So also, it looks like you've already set up who is playing by virtue of who is cursed with that little controller. <laughs> yep, I remember that. <laughs> I remember that they sometimes people like to know who's playing. So I I did an AI generated controller image, which is the most bizarre controller you have ever seen. Too many buttons. buttons. I love it. I love it. It's my favorite. And you can't stop me from uh, you can't stop me from using it. So deal with it. How about that? There's no laws against that. There's no laws against. And if someone tried to put a law up against that, I would I would vote for the other party. So Absolutely. there you go. Absolutely. Okay, I'm just going to add a little uh, uh, Dark Souls cover art because I'm playing Dark Souls 1. I'm going to continue the run. Uh, uh, we Nick ha was playing for a while uh, Dark Souls 2, which made me want to replay Dark Souls 2. Mm -hmm. uh, I played and beat Dark Souls 2 significantly faster than Nick because Nick still hasn't beaten uh, Dark Souls 2 as far as I'm aware. I think he's uh, he's kicking it so that he can add it to his uh, pile of games he beats next year. I think yeah, it's a it's a big brain move. A big brain move. Big brain move. Okay, how about this? How do we feel about like just up in the corner here, little Dark Souls box art? That's great. Does that look That's good? That's great. Great. Yeah, that look. I always like that man's uh, silhouette. It's like very svelte. Yes, very very svelte. Yeah. Uh, so, oh, actually, hold on. Something I need to get. Oh yeah, no worries. Uh, and over uh, uh, over in Twitch, George Lucas, thank you so much for 100 bits. Gifts from Howard the Duck. Oh my God. From you were Howard visited the by, Duck? by a Boxing Day Howard the Duck. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, and Nick the OG with 100 bits. Thank you so much. We doing biddies. Well, have some biddies while I watch from my workman's comp couch. Nick the OG uh, cut his hand at work. Oh and no. Got upwards, upwards of 14 stitches. Although he took the bandage off and there's only seven. So it might be either a Christmas miracle or the hospital scammed him. <laughs> some some stitches disappeared. <laughs> His body absorbed some of the stitches. <laughs> and well, Lammy, uh, yeah. thank you so much for the sub with Prime. Hell Knight, thank you so much for the tier one sub. Appreciate it over on Twitch. Uh, and Frohai Weinachten. Merry Christmas in, in, in German. Yeah. Oh. Someone speaks German over here. It's me. I speak it's a little German. <laughs> It was me. I was worried. I was worried, but it was Marty. It was Marty the whole time. 
Uh, and uh, Umbajug, welcome to Prime. Thank you so much. And George Lucas, my New Year's resolution is to reward second win with money anytime they play Dark Souls for my entertainment. Yes. Oh, I do have the master key. Uh, yeah, first of all, yes, hell yes. Uh, we're we're happy. We're happy to be here. I. Uh, Dark Souls, the Dark Souls franchise, the Souls Born series, which includes a Bloodborne and an Elden Ring at this point, which w means we need to add another hyphen to it. Uh, Souls Born Ring, Born Ring, the, yeah, the that sounds nice. Blood Souls Eld. The, uh, these That's are beautiful. you know obviously some of my favorite games, but these are also uh, my favorite games to play around this time of year. I find I find them to be uh, uniquely comforting. Uh, mm. During stressful times, and I yeah, yeah. don't exactly know why I why that is, but yeah, it's familiarity. Yeah, yeah, it's familiarity. Like it's there's a toughness to it, but there's also a rhythm and a pattern to it, and so it's like, oh yeah, I can I can deal with this. I just need to figure out the rhythms. Yeah, exactly. And you're doing a nice big naked uh, just club run. <laughs> I'm doing a naked club run. Uh, someone in the YouTube chat. Before we began, was wondering because today is Boxing Day, sure, and so they were wondering if I was going to do a Cestus run. Mm, those are the fists, right? Those are the fists. I don't. Oh, pillage body, pillage. Oh, oh, a right. <laughs> I was pressing Y because that's how you uh, pillage stuff in Elden Ring. Uh, those are the fists, and I currently do not have the fists. Mm. Uh, so I'm going to run. And are go the get good? I never see anyone like. I don't think I've ever used the fists. I don't think I've ever seen anyone do like a fist run. The fists are not so you know. Uh, Dark Souls. the The entire series is all about weapon scaling. Uh, if excuse, oh, because I have yes. enemies aggroed. Um, so it's all about weapon scaling, and so like you know, uh, for example, this club has really good scaling and strength. So if you yeah. bump up your strength scat stats, oh fuck. You, uh, this club is gonna do really good things for you. Sure. There's other ones that have the same thing, like dexterity and whatnot. Exactly. The Cestus has pretty shitty scaling. Mm, gotcha. In that uh, it only goes to C, C, C tier scaling in both strength and dexterity. Gotcha, gotcha. Which means that you. Oh right, pillage body. Which means that you have to scale two attributes. To make it even just C tier. Ugh. <laughs> yeah, that's a bummer. Yeah. Who has time for that? No in, one. In this economy? In this economy. We're wheeling and dealing? Even? Who could even? If you think about it, who could even? Uh, but I figured, you know what? It is Boxing Day. We'll go get him at least. There's some errands there you to run that way anyway. And that'll just give where, us... Where do, where, do you, where do you acquire them? You acquire... Oh, excuse you. You acquire them at the Blacksmith. Mm, and I, I did equip the master key when I started, so I can go to the blacksmith right away. Wonderful. Uh, Lars Morona, thank you so much for the sub on Prime. And then uh, over on YouTube, Larry Fix, $1.99 dono. No comment, but appreciate the dono, Larry. Uh, Beast March with a $5 dono. Good morning, gentlemen. I hope you both had a good Christmas. We did. We were both uh, both both households under the weather mm. for Christmas. Yes. A lot, of big a lot of bugs going around. A lot of bugs going around. A lot of uh, our Christmas plans got canceled. Luck uh, very luckily, knock on wood, uh, very luckily no one in my house uh, mm, got baby. sick. Got but uh, a few gatherings of ours got canceled because uh, of bugs. Mm. And, you know, like everyone was very apologetic. And, and it's like, no, I would prefer if you stay home, if you are feeling sick. I would prefer us not sharing the same air if you are sick let's sure. all be smart <laughs> uh i have a theory that bugs aren't actually going around and that people are lying because they have aquaman and the lost kingdom fever <laughs> and they don't want to spend time with family because they want to spend time at their local cinemaplex watching yes. aquaman and the lost kingdom that's the only logical conclusion by the way i mean it feels like this is the end of an era the end of the 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 CU? The DCU Cinematic Universe? Oh right? my god, this what a is, moment. This is the final thing even adjacent to the Snyderverse. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's and truly the end of an era. It is. It is the end of an era. I am very, very... Um, I'm filled with uh, schadenfreude in all, with all the negative reviews of... Mm -hmm. uh, what is it? Rebel Moon? Oh man, even Nick. 
I feel so bad because Nick, like Nick, went all in on this. He's like, yeah. "This is it. This is gonna be my, this is gonna be my masterpiece. This is gonna be the thing I make my identity." And he got like forty five minutes into it and stopped it. It was like, "I can't do this." Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, from what I've heard, it's very, very bad. But it's <laughs> like, it's this is Zack Snyder. Like, what are you doing? Yeah. And he, and then they're trying to do the thing of like, "Oh, but you just wait until the director's cut," and like, you make the movie. Make the movie the good one first. Make, make then you the don't movie have the good one. <laughs> well, then, Marty. Well, Marty. Make the movie the good one first. Make the mm. movie the good one first. Mm. <laughs> Listen, that's what Orson Welles and Alfred Hitchcock did, and they made a lot of the good ones first. That's true. That's true. Yeah. And, like, I, there is a part of me that does legitimately feel very bad because, like, oh, oops, crap. Almost died. I didn't. It's okay. Um, because, like, I do want new franchises to pop yeah. up. I want things that are not the established brands to be there. I love the idea of, like, oh, this is our version of a space fantasy. Yeah, yeah. Make something new so that new generations of, of kids can watch and, and love growing up instead of regurgitating our pop culture, it's, forcing every generation to love the same things. Of course, of course. And it's like, you know, so I can simultaneously applaud uh, an attempt but still admit that this is a kind of bad movie i yeah. have not seen it yet i'm very yeah. much looking forward to <laughs> as part, two com part two comes out in april <laughs> it does not uh, it does it was filmed as two movies that it is one half of a movie and part two comes out in april yep yes. this is rebel moon part one i fucking love that <laughs> That's you know what that Snyder being a really good producer is like let's lock him into two movies before the first one gets reviews <laughs> Because there's no way they're going to greenlight this after the first one. Right. Uh, I also want I want him to succeed because he's a Wisconsin boy. That's right. That's right. Uh, Green, yeah. Bay. A Green Bay. Green boy. Bay boy. Yeah. Uh, Shinzu with a 10-pound dono. Thank you so much, Shinzu. Congratulations, Jack. I'm getting Adventurous Nye back. Can't wait for the new episodes. Hope you both had a great holiday. Have Buko whip up some turtle soup cocktails on me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Rest in peace, Aaron Mooney. No relation. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so what, what what episode went up this weekend? Two? Episode two went episode up two, uh, so, last weekend. And for anyone who doesn't know, the the plan the uh, the plan is to do uh, all of the episodes that, that have uh, been up before. We're going to do one a week uh, leading up to the Unseen episodes. Hmm. Uh, the, the ones that no one has seen, episode 9, 10, and 11, uh, asterisk on episode 11. Uh, cool. That's timing wise should be February most likely. Timing wise should be February for the new episodes. Uh, cool. Very very excited. That was that took up a, a majority of my uh, mental space for like the month that it was in flux. And uh, and I'm just I'm very very excited. Uh, we we got uh, a, a incredibly clean deal, which is something I you know that's not something that can be said for a lot of these kinds of deals. Uh, yeah, where... that was actually the next the next super chat was SCS Guru with a five euro dono. Any any juicy tidbits from the <laughs> negotiations? Obviously, I, I can't go into too much detail because you know it's it's just a it's a it's contracts and stuff. Yeah. But uh, like what I can say is, uh, and and this is this is uh, no BS. This is something that I tweeted. I am incredibly appreciative of gamers and the escapist mm -hmm. uh, in working with Omar and myself. No, yeah. we we got at the end of the day, we got an incredibly clean deal where Omar and I owned the rights, no strings attached. Yeah. And uh, I did not think that was going to be possible. <laughs> yeah, there's it very easily could have been like, no, yeah. or here is an insane amount of money you need to pay us. Exactly. Here is clearly not use, uh, worth paying. Yeah, exactly. Or or something, you know, like, oh, we want a. a percentage of cuts of whatever whatever yeah whatever. yeah or creative input in season four or whatever yeah exactly so. and uh, none of that happened we got a we got an incredibly clean uh yeah. deal and i'm very very excited that they were one willing to talk to us in general mm -hmm. and two that they were willing to help us through the process because uh omar and i are you know a, a couple of video jockeys. We don't know much. We don't know none uh -huh. about no yeah. uh, no talk. So they have been <laughs> legitimately very helpful. All right, here we go. Love to hear it. 
purchase item. Uh, so yeah, no juicy tidbits. Uh, I'm just trying. I'm trying to think of any information I can give you that you would find interesting, which is which is not really because it was so clean. We get yeah. the episodes. The I, I, what I will say is something uh, an unintended uh, uh, aspect of the clean deal is like, oh, well, we get all the past episodes, too. That's great. That's a great clean deal. Uh, something I didn't think about, though, is, like, those episodes are now gone. Like, people can't watch yeah. the old episodes. Uh, so right now we are uh, remastering. Oh, here we go. Here's Asestis. Do I need two? I probably don't need two. Um, we're working on remastering those episodes with fresh new animations. We're going to, you know, make it look kind of like how the newer animations look. But yeah. in the meantime, they're not up anywhere so anyone who wants to catch up is unable to that was uh, slightly unintended we didn't think that one through uh, yeah <laughs> that's that that yeah that is a good point um but i think we're working on isn't like the, the first up they're gonna be up uh audio wise i believe is the plan like that'll be easier to get the the audio versions up sooner rather than later correct yeah they will be uh they will be first up uh in podcast form they will be in mm -hmm. audio only podcast form all the season one season two and the two side quests yep but yeah so like i guess that's the juiciest tidbit is we didn't think that far ahead <laughs> yeah yeah that's again that is a product of uh two months ago all of us were just doing a very different job exactly <laughs> yeah Oh, see, here's the other shitty thing about the Cestus. Like, in, in Elden Ring uh, and in future games, uh, you know, there are many fist weapons, and you only need mm -hmm. to find one of them, and then you can two-hand them, and you have one on each hand. Yeah. Here, you buy one, and you only get one. <laughs> so do you have to buy a second one? You have to... To buy, not only do you have to buy a second one, you have to upgrade a second one. <laughs> oh. So you need double the upgrade material to make it a worse thing. Yeah, Zaki, how could you? Well, this is the first... They were still figuring it out, right? 2011. So, it was a very different time. Very different time. So, I, I basically what I'm saying here is... Uh, here, I'll go punch some people, but I'm, I'm probably going to stick with my club. I'm What's the deal with boxing? With boxing Day is not about boxing, is it? Boxing Day... I want to say it's literally like the boxes you get as presents, right? I don't, I don't know. Is that it? Someone who celebrates Boxing Day. As a holiday to give gifts to people in need. Yeah, yeah. So it's, the boxes That's are nice. the presents. Oh, okay. It's not like it's going on the streets to fight someone, okay. which is nice. Uh, and then, uh, oh, I had a, oh my God, where did it soup? Oh, Nick the OG with 100 bits. Thank you so much. I used to think I was good at Souls games, but then I watched Jack play, and boy, howdy, I was wrong. I mean, how, how does it feel good. to make people question their own value and self worth? I'm not that good. Uh, I I I know a bit, and I I know like how to cheese. Uh, but mm -hmm. you know, there are people who do amazing, amazing things with these games. And I don't. Yeah, think... I feel like there's tiers of good, and I believe you are in a tier higher than most of the rest of us, especially the folks who like stream here at. at uh, Second Wind, and, and you stream with the Escapists. Uh, but even from your tier, there are many, many, many tiers <laughs> higher than you. When you watch speedruns, when oh you watch, God. you know, the the folks who've, like, the, the what's the, I'll, let me solo her, or whoever that guy yes. was. Who kept fighting. Yeah. yeah. All right. I'm, I'm going back to my club already. That that Cestus was doing absolute dick damage. Cestus for the rest of us. Uh, and Bajango with a $10 dono. Thank you so much, Bajango. Uh, Marty, thanks for shouting out the Video Game Historical Foundation. Been watching the Insert Credit podcast for a bit, and to see Frank Cifaldi post a video about Super Sushi Pinball after hearing him talk about it was great. Uh, completely agree. Yeah, they just, that was the, I was talking about that on uh, Firelink a few weeks ago. Oh. The Video Game uh, Historical Foundation, which is, that's the thing I, uh, I support. I, I donate money every month and they send me like a random ass old magazine. Ooh. So I just, once a month I just open my thing and it's like, here's Game Pro from 1998. Um, <laughs> but uh, they do a lot of work. They're like working this year on archiving, their goal is to archive every old video game magazine ever. Oh my And God. then... Uh, they also just unearthed uh, a, a, a game that has not been seen in 30 years, uh, oh. Sushi Pinball. So, yeah, Very cool foundation. Fun. For people who like uh, nerding out on video game history, they are a wonderful organization. Uh, the Switch, thank you so much for the Prime membership over on 
Twitch, and then Precious Roy and Umbojug. Thank you so much for joining the Green Gang. And Chris Berg with 50 Norwegian Kroner. Happy Festivus. You like Seinfeld? We've never talked about Seinfeld. How do you, how do you feel about Seinfeld? I, I do enjoy a lot of Seinfeld. I, mm -hmm. I think, like, I enjoy a lot of Seinfeld. I think, <laughs> I think Seinfeld, uh, I think Jerry Seinfeld got, uh, okay, th so here's my hot take. Jerry Seinfeld has been significantly elevated in a comedy sense because of Larry David. Sure. Yeah. I think Seinfeld himself is a, is a, a, a perfectly adequate stand-up comedian who just so happened to be friends with one of the most uh, irreverently funny people ever to exist. Mm -hmm. uh, and they happened to make a TV show at a time in which that uh, that could, relationship could blossom and we could yep. get away with Seinfeld the show. Uh, so, I don't know, like, I've, I've always liked Seinfeld the show, but Seinfeld as the person is wrapped up in that. And of course, like, the mm -hmm. show never would have existed without Seinfeld's fame, like, without Absolutely. his being so <coughs> mediocre and famous. So, yeah. <laughs> so, and, like, the perfect casting of those core four. Of course. Um, yeah. Yeah, it is. It's funny to. It's also funny to go back. This started some terrible hot take on Twitter the other day about how Portal Two is bad because it's just filled with like two, uh, early 2010s era like internet humor, and the response was it created that early 2010s internet humor. Like, oh, sure. When you go back to Portal Two, if you want, if you don't watch it with fresh eyes, you're like. Oh, this is kind of cliche. You know, like it created the cliches, and I feel like Seinfeld is also one of those things where if you go back, you're like, oh, a bunch of shows did this though, and you're like, well, this was the first one to do it. They did it because this show did it, and right. it's a similar thing to movies like if you watch Casablanca, you're like, oh, this movie's filled with so many cliches, and you're like, it created the cliches. Like they weren't cliches until it came around. <laughs> And that's that can be from a from a historical perspective, from a preservation perspective, that can be a really tricky thing to get across to people. Like, no, no, yeah, no. yeah. Uh, what was it like? Uh, uh, CGP Grey did that. Uh, was it a Britney video? A video on the history of the name Britney? Hmm. Oh, Tiffany, Tiffany. That's what it was. Okay. It was a history on the name Tiffany. Um, and Tiffany is as a name has gone back to the medieval periods, but only like we think of it as an 80s name. Sure, yeah, I do. Um, but it has this like incredibly long history, and people are like, oh well, Tiffany, the singer, created the Tiffany craze, uh, the Tiffany name craze, and they're like, no, 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 she was part of the Tiffany name. Craze. Yeah, yeah, she's a she's a mile marker along the. The long road of Tiffany. Yes, and I, I want to say it was the same for like a Britney Spears, but uh, in any case, that's a, what, a, yeah. what, a, what a what a what a topic to have a video about. How do you even come up with that? Because like, I'm going to dig into the name Tiffany. Because that's what he does. That's why we love video essayists like that because they yeah. find the strangest takes. Yeah, they, uh, they they take that element about all of us that's really weird and how we all kind of have a head injury when it comes to certain things, and they use their creativity to turn it into art that we can all enjoy. Excuse you, I rested at the bonfire. Why are you still there? Rude. Very rude. Uh, uh, in Carradine72, thank you so much for the sub, over on Twitch, and Nick with 100 bits. Uh, Seinfeld's like Will and Grace. You don't watch for the title characters. You watched for Jack and Karen or for Jimmy Lane. <laughs> mm. I never watched Will and Grace. You never watched oh. Will and Grace? You're not a Grace? No, fan? I never watched Will and Grace. I never watched Friends. Um... I was I was big I was a big Seinfeld boy, and then probably no sitcoms until like the sort of NBC boom of the mid, the mid. Well, I guess the rest of the development, but then I was I was there for all the NBC stuff with with The Office and Parks and Rec and Thirty Rock and you know my my hot take is that Arrested Development is not a sitcom. Uh, what is it? Uh, I think it created something new. It well well it didn't necessarily create something new, but uh, in my head, a sitcom is the three camera style is the standard three okay. camera style and because arrested development was a single camera show it doesn't necessarily fit into those confines so it's like not on a 
not on a kind of live studio audience soundstage. Right. And so uh, it's uh, and it's di really it's diff it's just different like uh, it's different uh, background forms. But like same with like a modern family. That's a single camera sure. show, even though it is uh, bog standard presentation of an old three camera sitcom. But the, because of the way they shot it, it is something slightly different. Well, and the I guess I don't know if the office was the first one to do the, you know, two camera testimonials that so many other shows ended up taking, whether it's that or Parks and Rec or, you know, even now with like Abbott Elementary. Right, right. Well, and, and by the way, like it's a it's a great form, uh, but not quite the same. Like they're not doing it live yeah. in front of a studio audience. Yeah, yeah. It's a situational comedy, Jack. I understand that. I am trying to be, <laughs> you know, it's the difference between, you know, screamo and emo music. Sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I understand. They're, they're in the same aisle, but uh, I think they are in different different ends of the aisle. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, Smart Smears. I did watch Fresh Prince. I watch a lot of those kind of like uh, family oriented um, sitcoms of like the your, your Full Houses, your Family Matters, your um, Fresh Prince. Those were good ones. Oh, um, da -da -da -da. And then uh, Hell Knight with 100 bits. Thank you so much. Current game of 2024 that you're most looking forward to. For me, it is definitely Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Mm. Uh, yeah, that is that is mine as well. Mm. Do you have one? Probably the Elden Ring DLC. If that, I'm assuming that comes out, which is probably going to be more than DLC. It feels like it's going to be a beefster. I, you know, like, let's not get our expectations too high. You would never. Because uh, no, it's the FromSoft has has a track record with their DLC, and my guess is their DLC is going to be the same as all the rest of their DLC, which is very very tight, uh, significantly shorter than the main game, and uh, and very difficult. Yeah, it's going to be the Elden Ring from Asicus. Yeah, yeah. It, they they have a formula with their DLC, and my guess is they are going to continue with that formula. Which is funny, because I would say, for me personally, aside from uh, a handful of annoying bosses, Elden Ring felt like the easiest of... Or it felt like the... Maybe the open world nature of it, but it felt like the FromSoft game that um, I was able to get through the cleanest on a first run, um, compared to the Souls games or Bloodborne... Um, and then there's Sekiro, which I re I started Sekiro on uh, on my Steam Deck oh. the other day. I don't know, I'll, I'll see how far I get. I'm not very far into it, but we'll see. We'll see if I actually uh, <laughs> if I actually give it the old college try this time. Oh, sure. I think like El the the thing that is beautiful about Elden Ring and like you know replaying all the Souls games and you know the the history of kind of like what FromSoft has learned, right? Like every mm -hmm. every Souls game, even Bloodborne included in there, and Elden Ring. It's like, what, what have we learned from our past games, and now what do we want to try? Yeah, like, yeah. You know, even Dark Souls 2. Like, Dark Souls 2 is like, guess what? You get to warp between fires right from the get-go. Everybody yeah. hated that. <laughs> Everybody hated that from the first game. We fixed it. Yeah. Uh, and so, you know, the neat thing about Elden Ring is they just give you the most options. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, I guess I guess that's the thing. And it's very easy to avoid some of the hardest. Like, I never yes. beat Melania, but you didn't have to. You didn't have to. And it's like, we, we're going to give you the tools. Mm -hmm. We're going to give you all the tools. That, oh, no, excuse you. Lock on camera. Thank you. Uh, we're going to give you all the tools, uh, and we're going to make those tools, like, really work well with uh, your particular build. We are going to make sure that you have every... Uh, advantage that you have without just handing you the keys. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, which I think is great. I think it works great. Uh, I, yeah. uh, I obviously am a big fan. But I think uh, many people can, can see uh, see that as like it's the easiest when it just gave you the most tools and of course the most refined tools because it's the yeah. Best. And I think maybe it uh, it it was built around the idea of. Um, quelling any frustration you might have by generally, if you hit a boss that you feel like is too hard at the moment, you can just go <laughs> and do anything else. Yes. And like the only like real moments of frustration for me was when I hit something that I needed. Like the the two that I always keep going back to are the the was a flame giant. Was that the the, the, the fire giant? Yeah, yeah. Fire giant, and then the godskin duo up in um, 
crumbled Farum Azula. Yeah. Um, and those were guys at that point, I was like, I just want to beat the game. And these guys are in my way and they're being very mean. <laughs> and they're, they're being, just, they're just being mean. so mean. <laughs> so mean. <laughs> uh, yes. And uh, all right, go make some super duper chats. Pure Pyro with a two euro don't know. Thank you so much. Did Jack ever end up playing Disco Elysium? Uh, I did not. I did purchase it uh, while it was on super sale. I think I got it for like two bucks. Oh my god! I got it's it for a ridiculous super. price. Uh, and so it's like it's in my life. Hey, hey, no, not you heal. You're an enemy. You don't get to heal. Uh, I got it for a ridiculous price. I don't think, and like right now, uh, someone actually recently gifted me Baldur's Gate three. Oh, nice. Uh, which you know, it's like, oh, I, I might. Baldur's Gate three is one of, is one of those games where it's like I played it in early access, wasn't necessarily my thing, but much like Disco Elysium, I keep hearing such amazing things about it, especially from like people that you trust. Yeah, like, oh, okay, I, if all these people like it, like by the whatever Pythagorean theorem I should watch. I like it. I don't think that's what the Pythagorean theorem is. What is that? No, that's exactly that's the, that's if A exactly equals B and B equals C, A equals C. Pythagorean. That's exactly what the Pythagorean theorem is. <laughs> uh, Beast March of the Two-Hour Dono, thank you so much. If you have Aquaman fever, get vaccinated. Did you guys get your Aquaman shots this winter? No, because I want that Momoa. <laughs> a, oh, bottomless Momoa. <laughs> I am a big Momoa stan. I think Momoa is uh, is a, a genuinely good actor and like brings a kind of uh, chaotic charisma to the screen and yeah. anything he does. So I just want to see yeah. more Momoa. Um, what was I hearing? Oh, I was hearing like he was doing an interview uh, when he was first brought on to read or to audition for Justice League. He thought he was going to be Lobo. And for oh, anyone funny. who has read DC Comics, you know who Lobo is. Momo, like, literally, Momoa is Lobo, and I hope he comes back as Lobo. Uh, I actually did a pitch. Uh, I was on a podcast trying to uh, remake bad movies, and my pitch for a Green Lantern movie was a buddy cop comedy with uh, John Stewart, like the cop Green Lantern, and yeah. Lobo having to team up. I so, like... That. The straight laced cop and Lobo having to go on a team up adventure in yeah, yeah. a Green Lantern movie that would kill. Like the epitome of chaos. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh fuck. I I didn't think you were moving already, Bor. Oh fuck, he killed Bor. Bor was four. moving already. Uh, so in any case, like I think I think Momoa is great. I want more Momoa. So I'm not going to be vaccinated against Aquaman. I am going to see Aquaman as one of the few people who actually genuinely enjoyed the first Aquaman movie. Uh, I did get vaccinated for everything else. I got my boosters. I got my flu shot. I am ready to go. You got your Gal Gadot, I got Gal Gadot my, shots. I got my Gal Gadot shot. Got uh, your Cavill shots. I, oh, you got to get your Cavils because you know what? We're hitting a point with Cavill where he's done more bad than good. Uh, yeah. And I've been I've been a big Cavalier, a big Cavalier, Cavalier. You know, for a while. But you know what? He's done more bad than good now. Yeah. Uh, George Lucas, hundred bits. Community wants to know who your favorite WWF wrestlers were. What you can't just say the community wants the community. to know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The community. People are pounding at the door. <laughs> Who's your favorite wrestler? <laughs> Momoa might be the person who feels like he like was a wrestler, but he wasn't. Mm. Like if you showed me a picture of him, I'd be like, Yeah, he was definitely like, yeah, he fought Stone Cold Steve Austin once. 100%. Like, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He has big, big wrestler energy. Yes, I'm with you. In terms of the wrestlers turned actors, I think the one I've been uh, the most impressed with has been Batista. Yes. Uh, I think he's uh, he's wonderful, and he works with a lot of really interesting directors. Mm -hmm. uh, I also really liked uh, Peacemaker, Peacekeeper. Peace. First Peace. of all. P uh, Which, uh, Peace one was that? Peace Peacemaker is John Cena, yes. No, no, no. And then, no, I, I moved. I, I put a comma. Oh, so okay. Of the wrestlers I liked, I liked uh, Batista, comma. Mm -hmm. I really liked Peacekeeper? Is that what it's called? Peacemaker. Peacemaker? Peacemaker. What is Peacekeeper? Peacekeeper is, uh, I don't think that's anything. I think, I think it's like you're... the name of some sheriff's gun. Yeah. Uh, I, I thought uh, John Cena was uh, delightful in uh, Peacemaker. I don't like The Rock. I'm kind of out on The Rock. I'm going to be honest. You're out on I The like... Rock? I think as an actor, he doesn't do anything for me. He doesn't do anything. He seems like very... Uh... 
I don't know. Just fair. He's just like he has one note, and yeah. that note has been the same note since I watched wrestling as a kid. Yeah, and I don't. I don't know. It just it doesn't seem like he does anything risky. I think yeah. he's always afraid of like tarnishing his image. Um, yeah, he knows he knows his brand too well, and he has gotten to the point where he enjoys the smell of his own farts. He smells what the rock is cooking. He smells what the rock is cooking, right? And so I agree. Yeah. I agree. Like he was for a while, like just you know that that kind of the it actor. Like oh, you get the rock in your movie, it's going to make its money back. It's going to be uh, you know a fun schlocky good time, but. Yes, we have hit a point in which we're done with The Rock. He's Where uh, he supposed to go. Oh, right, right. I know, I know. They said he's going to be in like a A twenty four movie. Um, oh, really? Which could be like, I don't know. It'd be it'd be cool if that is actually his. And it's like one of the Safdie brothers is directing it. So the guy who did uh, uh, like Gems and uh, oh, so that that could be that could be cool. I think like he just had the the Black Adam movie, which is the last thing I saw him in, was was such was was like unmitigated garbage. Yeah. To the point of like not even being fun. And anytime you, where you can see the seams, you know, like you can see like the behind the scenes contract negotiations in a movie, you know you're in for a bad time. Yeah. And that is a movie where you can just see The Rock saying, I can't ever lose a fight. Yeah, yeah. And then hearing all that behind the scenes stuff with like on the, in the Fast and Furious movies with mm-hmm. him and, and like uh, Vin Diesel needing to go like one for one with punches and shit like that. Like, what are we doing? <laughs> what, uh, what are we Casey doing here? in the chat says, I feel for The Rock, still rooting for him. Why? I mean, feel for, you don't need to feel for it. I mean, I'm. I'm <laughs> I, I don't dislike The Rock. The Rock has not done anything for me to dislike him, but, like, my Q rating on him just hasn't moved. Like, he doesn't, like, move the needle for me anymore. Whereas, like, if someone's like, Batista's being in this movie, I get, like, a who. Like, Batista in that M. Night Shyamalan movie earlier this year, he's great. As, like, a little weirdo who shows up to your door and says the world's ending. <laughs> we have to Rock could never one. be a little weirdo. Oh, we oh, gotta oh, kill oh, one of you. Oh, fuck. We gotta kill one of you. Uh, the Rock needs to be in an M. Night Shyamalan movie. That's the thing. Yeah. The Rock needs to do something weird, like do something yeah. weird and uncomfortable. We want to see we w- like not just character growth. We want to see actors grow. Yeah, it's why we yeah, get I, so excited when we see Adam Sandler in an uncut gems or a, a movie that stretches. On Strong Love, as an actor. yeah, yes. He's gonna be in some sad sci-fi movie on Netflix where he's like a lonely dude on a spaceship, which yeah. is one of my favorite. Genres is lo- lonely dude in space who's got like father issues. Yes. Um, yeah, that's a Ad Astra, Interstellar, Gravity. Just give me a lonely dude in space. Doesn't even have to be a dude, just a, a lonely, broad sweeping dude in space. Yeah, it's great. Uh, I believe yeah. du- dude, uh, you know, if we're going to believe Keenan and Cal, dude is, uh, is omni gendered. If you want someone, I'm going to, I will go to the gates of hell with Keenan Thompson. Yeah, I will go to the gates of hell for Keaton Thompson. Love that man. Right, and so it's like, yeah, uh, you know, if we're if we are to believe Good Burger, do, dude has no gender. <laughs> why would we? Why would Good Burger ever lie to us? Right. Um, SVS Guru, five yes. euro dono. Thank you so much, SVS Guru. Got sick right after the office Christmas dinner. Uh, you go out in public once, and bam, sick. Luckily, the Rona tests were negative. See, oh, that's why you don't go out in public. Never. I thought you meant sick. You just like started throwing up on your coworkers. Which oh, that was good. sick. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like I've I've been out in public um, uh, recently, and you know, knock on wood again. So far, so good. Mm-hmm. The uh, the uh, we've been lucky. We've been lucky, but like you know, I, yeah. I got my flu shot. I got my Rona booster. Mm-hmm. So that's all good, and now it's just kind of you know wait, wait and see, and uh, and drink as much grapefruit juice as humanly possible. I'm doing a I'm doing a doing a Jack Packard special where I have several liquids on my desk. I have I have Gatorade, I have iced coffee, I have water, and I have more iced coffee. Hmm. There's my coffee. There is my grapefruit juice, which I drink uh, you know I double fist with my coffee. Yeah, as one does. Which, by the way, also uh, an incredible amount of vitamin C, uh, you know, helps keep you healthy. And of course, water. That's why it's called grapefruit. 
Uh, no, I did not say I want Doom in space. I want Dune, Dude in space. Because The Rock was already in Doom in space, and that was a bad movie. We don't need more of that. We don't need. We're, we're, we don't need any more of that. Yeah, we're good. We're good as far as that's concerned. We do need uh, like lone dude in space. Like if you've never seen Moon, oh great with, dude in space uh, movie, with Sam Rockwell. Sam Rockwell. That's a great dude alone in space movie. Yeah, just having a go of it. Yeah, highly recommend Moon. Yeah, The Martian. That's just a dude. That's just a dude trying to figure things out on Mars. How are we going to get him back? How are we going to get him back? How are we going to get him back? How is he going to get back? He doesn't even know. <clears throat> he's in trouble. Good thing he's got Donald Glover there. He'll help him get back. Uh, that was a spoiler for The Martian. Uh, SJS Guru with a five-year-old dono. Thank you so much. Also, I don't like the word Estes. It's too close to the word Estrus. What's Estrus? Is that a German thing? I don't know what Estrus is. SJS Guru is German, so I thought it might be a German thing. Okay. Estrus, a recurring... Uh, uh, Oh, it's estrus is like a recurring period of sexual uh, fertility in female mammals, like heat. So, if, like a dog in heat, a dog in estrus. Oh, yeah, it's like being horned up. Being horned oh, up. Uh, I yeah. mean, maybe that's what estrus does. Maybe that's why it heals you. Oh, I'm so horny. <laughs> uh, it, it makes the blood God. rush all over you, right? And like, hell yeah, hell yeah, brother. <laughs> Uh, Raxilus with the $10 dono. Thank you so much. Uh, hi, Jack. I just rewatched Titanic, and the best way to watch is to interrupt the androgynous Jack as a... is to interpret the androgynous Jack as a lesbian while dropping your rat sandwich joke every time things get romantic. 10 out of 10 experience. Rat sandwich? Rat sandwich? Is that your rat I sandwich joke? I have no idea if I have made a rat sandwich joke. If I have, great. <laughs> I do not remember... Uh, one, I've never seen Titanic. Two, uh, I don't know if I've ever made a rat sandwich joke. This feels like it was it was your rat sandwich joke. Yeah, that's what it sounds you, you like. Owned this. You've made a lot of jokes, though. I, and I'm, so at a certain point, yeah. you can't catalog them all. Right. Too many, too many jokes, too many spoofs, too many goofs. So what are you going to do? Yum, cheese. Is someone Yum, someone might be typing like what that rat sandwich joke is. I hope you are. Yeah. If it was good, yeah. hey, if it was a good joke, we're here for it. No, yeah. we're all here for the good jokes. And if it was a bad joke, we refuse. Uh, we uh, then uh, that was we... not me. That was someone else. Yeah, that was that was another Jack. <laughs> uh, Snake of the Garden with a two euro. Don't know. Thank you so much, Snake. It is Saint Stephen's Day in Ireland. Shout out to him. You know what? Shout out to Saint Stephen. Yeah. You know who doesn't get enough love? Saint Stephen. Saint Stephen Seagal. I mean, he is. Steven Seagal. No, he has a whole day. Dude. I guess he's fine. <laughs> Steven Seagal went down the went down the the, the wicked path. Yeah, no, he was he was not a saint. Oh fuck! Oh, I almost killed myself because I was trying to remember how to jump. Oh, someone said during the Avatar stream that was like a week and a half ago. That was like two weeks ago. <laughs> what? What? Yeah, you want me to remember an Avatar stream? Rat sandwich. Oh, I was on that Avatar stream. I don't even remember it. <laughs> I mean, I have a very bad memory on streams. Right. I think. We're, we're just here goofing and playing games uh, that we cannot be expected to remember anything we say, do, promise. <laughs> yeah, you have to, you're doing the plane right now. No. All I remember were Vistas. That was the only thing from the Avatar stream I remember were the Vistas. And and do you remember? How we were. My, my favorite part of that stream was Nick hyping up the Vista. And us just being like being very underwhelmed by the Vista, and then finding out that that wasn't the Vista to be hyped up about. <laughs> that was my favorite. Part. We were we were tricked by the Vista. Uh, be lengthy with a five dollar dono. Thank you so much. Be lengthy. Any recommended uh, any recommended reading slash viewing for a newer DM? Also, did you name your character Evander Hollowfield? Nice. No, this is uh. What did I name him? Phibis. <laughs> this is Phibis. Oh, that was Phibis. I don't know. I named him like eight months ago. I have no recollection, no memory. It's Phibis. Uh, 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 for new DMs, uh, there is—I mean, there's there is a lot of phenomenal, uh, a lot of phenomenal uh, people out there making phenomenally good D and D content. 
Uh, something that definitely helped me was uh, either watching or listening to other people. So, you know, like if mm-hmm. you're watching Adventures Nigh, that's that's helping. Uh, you know, there's some great uh, shows that I have watched in the past. Uh, uh, I've seen a few uh, seasons of uh, Dimension Twenty. I have not. I'm not caught up like on the newest ones. What's uh, Dimension Twenty? Dimension Twenty is the uh, is the dropout Dungeons and Dragons show gotcha. DM'd by Brennan Lee Mulligan, uh, who is uh, much like myself uh, a former or and a former slash current improviser. So you know, very improv heavy, very uh, very goof heavy uh, DM. Mm-hmm. Big fan of that. Uh, um, uh, if you are a fan of uh, college humor in general, actually the the very first D and D show that I listened to before I even knew about Dimension Twenty was not another D and D podcast, which uh, is a, a show by former college humor uh, writers and staff and actors, and I think uh, that was very fun. Uh, there is a ton of Matt uh, Matt Colville Matt Colville uh, who is currently working on his own tabletop role playing system um, has some phenomenal uh, videos about like how to handle encounters how to uh, space out your encounters to keep your players engaged Matt Colville uh, is phenomenal but the best thing that you can do is play mm-hmm. the more you play and the more you interact with your players and figure out what they want and what they like and how you can weave your way into that is the best but oh yeah there's a ton of uh, really great really great content <laughs> yeah especially ma- i imagine after the uh, over the past few years with the sort of resurgence boom in popularity of uh D, you know, oh, in the post critical yeah. role world um I imagine there's a lot of a lot of great resources for that absolutely absolutely so that like there's just a lot of good stuff out in the world so you know watch watch uh and enjoy and you know kind of the, you know, a lot of a lot of uh, DMs will have some really phenomenal ideas about how they handle encounters, and then you know you get to kind of you know I don't want to say steal that, but you get to interpret that. Yeah. Oh come on! Absorb. I rolled. I rolled. <laughs> how dare you, Dark Souls? I how dare rolled. you? Rolled. Uh. Yeah. 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 There's, I'm trying to think there's there's another one. like, And then, of course, like if you have an idea for a home game, I had an idea where I wanted my players. Uh, there was like a creature uh, in, in a forest who was uh, like attacking villagers at night. And so like what I thought might be fun is if they actually had to like go out in nature and hunt uh, this dangerous creature. And so I found a video of someone explaining how they ran how they gamified hunting a creature that was oh, a little cool. a little more than just like do a nature check. Oh yeah, you, yeah. You're good. <laughs> yeah, that's like uh, I guess one of the one of the neat things is how you interpret and like convey specific actions. Like you can sort of put your own touch on like like you said, how to make something like hunting more than just a nature check. How to how to kind yeah. of personalize it and and put a neat spin on it. How to how to gamify stuff? Because at the end yeah. of the day, that's what you're doing. You are building, uh, you're building a game for mm-hmm. people, and so how to best gamify that within the? Oh my god, I'm just gonna die in my run back here. Oh no, no, it's fine, it's fine. Because that's Dark Souls. Uh, you know that's how to fine. how to gamify, how to keep your players engaged. That that isn't just like roll once. Now all this yeah, magic yeah. happens. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah. Uh, Nick, Nick the OG, uh, 100 bits again in Twitch. Thank you so much, Nick. Jack, if you haven't seen it, there's an hour special on Sleep Token on the Drumeo YouTube. Uh, you'd probably enjoy good behind the scenes type breakdown of some of their music. Fuck. Not only not only did I see it, I watched it live the morning it came out. <laughs> a Christmas miracle. Uh, Sleep Token is uh, is a, a metal band. Uh, just put out their third album this year. Um, and they are an anonymous metal band. It is it is a perfect fusion of like screamy death metal and like nineties R and B. Which if you are I a fan of both of those genres. That, but I love that. Yeah. Um Take Me Back to Eden is their new album. It's phenomenal, but they're anonymous. Like they don't do interviews, they don't show their faces when they perform. Wow. People don't know who they are. And I think like that kind of music forward band is very exciting. Yeah, yeah. 
Uh, but the drummer, who is known as Two, <laughs> just Two, just the the number Two, uh, easy, easy. did a uh, a live drum session to Sleep Token songs and a mini interview with the YouTube channel Drumio. Uh, and yeah, it's about an hour long. You can see him playing live to Sleep Token songs. He's a phenomenal drummer. Uh, an amazing video if you are into drumming or Sleep Token. Look at that. Look at that. Just look at what that. A time to get Honestly, the what internet. a time to be alive. Got some I, good stuff. I do like Drum Drumio's content as, like, I... Oh, oh my god. What is hitting me? No. What the fuck is even hitting me? <laughs> Spirits. Spirits. <laughs> ghosts. Boxing Day ghosts. I, uh, way back in the day, I was in several bands, and I started uh, my musical career as a drummer because I lied. I don't know if I if I ever told you Marty this story. I've never heard this. No. Uh, there was a really cool guy. There was a really cool guy in high school who played the guitar, okay. and I wanted to be friends with the guy. Uh, and uh, later we w would become friends and bandmates for several several years. That's good. But uh, you know he was talking to me. We were in uh, you know a class one day, and he was he was chitter chatting with me about like wanting to start a band, but he didn't know any drummers. Sure. And so I said, hey, I'm a drummer. I was not a drummer and had never played drums in my entire life. I just told him I was a drummer. Um, and he says, oh, my God, let's start a band. Uh, can you get together uh, this week? And I said, oh, I cannot. Uh, I broke all of my drums. All of my drums are broken. Sure. Yeah, yeah. It's classic drummer. <laughs> classic I drummed drummer. too hard. I drummed too hard. I drummed too hard and broke all of my drums. It, it wasn't until later that he realized how stupid my lie was. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, does, it doesn't matter because it all worked out. And so, like, and then basically I spent the next, like, month, two months, uh, you know, collecting any money I could to buy the shittiest drum set I could, and we started a band. Uh, Did you learn how to play the drums? Ne never officially. I, I I have good enough rhythm just to kind of you know make my way make my way downtown. Uh, so I I just hobbled my way through playing the drums, and then eventually I moved on to like playing the bass and the keyboards, uh, and was in bands for a very long time and enjoyed myself for a very long time. But uh, I have, I've always loved drumming. And so I, I am subscribed to Drumio. They have a uh, really great, uh, really great content where they uh, they have people listen. They have drummers listen to a song for the first time and try to make up their own drum part to it. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. I'm familiar with the channel now. I've definitely watched some of those videos. Yes, and it's very, very fun stuff. Oh no. Oh, oh, he oh, no. didn't get me. Great. Uh, yeah, oh, it's very, very fun stuff. Uh, so it is a channel that I enjoy in general, and then I saw that... Oh, fuck. I saw that they were having two on. Oh, it was great. One of the one of the few times that I was, like, there for a premiere video. Like, the premiere of this video is in one hour, and I'm like, I... Yeah, yeah. You're like, hell yeah, I will be there. There you go. Drumio. Look at all these recos you guys are getting. Drumio. Uh, Kai with a five pound dono. Thank you so much, Kai. Hey, Jack and Buka. Slept a bit on Adventures Night, the old place, but I'm completely hooked on it now. Blessings of tartar sauce be with you this holiday season. And to us all. I I oh, love God. it. I love it that like Buka and Musk uh, are still a part of the universe uh, in such a real way. Because they just didn't die. Because they just. <laughs> all you have to do is not die. <laughs> all you have to do is not die. Also, you could die and still be a part of the universe, and I think Jimmy showed us that. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Death is not the end of things, except for except for with uh, with Aaron Mooney, no relation. Uh, just you because I think Karen uh, Karen Ferryman was very keen on like, no, you're moving on. It's time. Yeah. It's time for you to move on. <laughs> Karen Ferryman. <laughs> Uh, Carl Anders of the five pound or five euro don't know. Thank you so much, Carl. Uh, this is PPP pay per pendant. Nobody actually knows where Boxing Day comes from. Lots of theories, but all our guesses just Brits being Brits. Classic Brits being Brits. Classic Britneys being Britneys. Did you know that's what Brits is short for? Is what? Britneys. Britney. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Britain is Br Britney land. I did not know that. That's great. 
Yeah. Fun fact. And SVS Guru with a five euro dono. Thank you so much. The only sitcom I actually liked and watched semi regularly was Married with Children. A little Al Bundy, hand down the pants. Whoo, doggy. Classic. Yeah. Show me someone who loves putting their hand down their pants more than Al Bundy. I'll wait because no one does. Because no one does. No. Uh, and then Hard Revenge subbed on Prime over on Twitch. Thank you so much, Hard Revenge. And thank you so much. It's so so amazing to see so many people in, in the Green Gang over on YouTube. So many people, familiar faces, resubbing on Twitch. New faces. Uh, just really appreciate all the Super Chats, the donors. Remember, all the Super Chats right now are going towards Adventures Nigh Season 4, live on location. Not live on location. Filmed on location. Uh, this uh, This spring... <laughs> Live um, on location. Oh no! Uh, live in front of a studio audience. Um, oh god, no! Uh, uh, yeah, we're we're cobbling those together. Nick is Nick is putting together all the. We're st- we're still figuring out exactly how to do the bar thing because since we stream across two channels, it's hard to share a bar. Oh yeah. Um, but we we appreciate all the donos. Um, season four is gonna be bigger than even season three, so very excited for that. We're very excited about that, and you know, remember for season three when we were all together, we definitely did live stream <clears throat> together. That is uh, mm-hmm. uh, our plan uh, again uh, for this one, where we can all like you know be in the same room and play games and do stuff. We're still figuring all that out. Yeah, uh, but uh, very a lot of excited. lessons were learned from last live stream, <laughs> so I think this one a banger, an absolute banger. I think like the biggest lesson is hey, let's be prepared for this live stream. Yeah, yeah. would yeah. that be fun? We'll, we'll sprinkle a little preparation on this. See what happens. Uh, but yeah, I appreciate that. And I appreciate so many. Um, I've, I've seen so many. I have access to the Patreon now, which is very exciting. So I'm posting uh, Darren's columns on there. There was not a column yesterday because I didn't want to put one on Christmas. You don't you, from, spend time with your family. Don't be reading Darren's thoughts on Aquaman 2. Uh, that's what <laughs> Boxing Day is for. Um, but uh, it's been so amazing just to have. I, I now just get an email every anytime someone uh, subscribes to the Patreon or you know t- uh, becomes a patron, and it's it's incredible. So that that means the world to us, and that allows us to continue making the weird shit that we make. And ooh, we have so much weird shit planned in 2024. You have we no really, idea. We really truly do. no idea. It's very very exciting. Like we we have weird shit and familiar shit, which is yes. like the best. A nice combination. Yeah. 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 Uh, George Lucas, 100, 100 biddies over on Twitch. Uh, my favorite Dark Souls story bit has always been in the DLC when Hawkeye Go shooting down uh, Calamite with his giant bow. Yes. I don't I don't remember who Hawkeye... Goff? Go? Probably Go. Yeah, that's that's Probably how go. I would pronounce it. Van um, Go? Yes. Yeah. Hawkeye Go uh, is the giant... Uh, the is, is the giant... Uh, I want to say like... Canonically, he's the one that carves the little stones that say "Thank you." Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and in the come on, dragon, let's go. How do I get this dragon to fucking move? Oh, there it is. Uh, uh, he is a he's a giant and he is an archer. And in the DLC, if you. Uh, in order to fight Calamide, the the big dragon, you need mm-hmm. to uh, do some quests for Go, and then he shoots down. He's blind also, so he's a, oh, a giant blind archer who uh, is incredibly badass. There you go. Would you get down here already, you fucking dragon? Calamite's real. Calamite is is very rude. Yes, Calamite we'll be honest, is fighting Calamite incredibly rude. Uh, Pure Pyro 2, Euro Dono. Thank you so much, Pure Pyro. Opinions on Gremlins and Gremlins 2. Great. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very pro Gremlins. Yeah, very pro Gremlins. Yeah. How do you I get like this? I like when the mom puts the one in the microwave. <laughs> that mom did more Gremlin fighting than anyone else in the movie. Including... Yeah, I don't know. She's just prepared. Like, oh, yeah. there's Gremlins attacking. I just gotta act right now. Yeah. Give it up for moms. Yeah. Uh, Shout out to moms. Shout out to moms. Uh, how do you get this fucking dragon to come down? Uh, Nick said you got to get closer to her. Oh, okay. Maybe that's it. I think if I get closer, I'll just get burnt, but we'll see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just burnt. That's not good. Yeah, I'm just dead that's now. Good, now I'm that's just dead. Good. That's not good. Now I'm just dead, Nick. Did you do that on purpose? Nick, <laughs> incredibly rude. That, that's incredibly rude. <laughs> You missed the window, friend. You missed you know the window. <laughs> you missed the window. I'm just gonna tell you, every time I give bad advice, I'm just like that. Ah, yeah, the you missed the window. Reef window. You missed it. 
No, I know you. Think you got to go under the bridge, shoot it. You go, you go under the bridge, and then, uh, or you can go under the bridge. But the only way to uh, get the bonfire that's over here is to uh, is to go over the bridge. Under the bridge, shooting tail makes her fly away. Oh, is that it? Do you have any bows, bows and or have, arrows? I think I have a, uh, I have a crossbow. There you go. Uh, Matt with a twenty dollar dono. Thank you so much, Matt. Just showing my measurable appreciation for the Second Wind team in this very measurable quantity of twenty dollars. Thank you so much, Matt. Uh, appreciate it. And Montequila with a five pound dono. Thank you so much. Jack, did you know that your Starfield review is one of the top Steam reviews for the game? How does it feel to be Steam famous? Thanks to all at Second Wind. You have a Steam review that went famous? Apparently. I was, I was, on a, I mean, I, I know it, it uh, unlike some Steam reviews, it has gotten uh, plenty of comments, including legitimate comments saying that uh, I didn't put enough hours into it to fully understand it, hmm. though I have 42 hours into the game. Yeah, it gets, it gets good at 45. <laughs> you just didn't get it. Right? Was your was it like a goof review, or was it a real No, it was a, it was a very serious uh, review uh, in which, you know, like, and, and by the way, like, I, I really... Uh, I really struggled on my feelings about Starfield because there were definitely times where I was legitimately enjoying it. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. If I just come down here. George Lucas was a good point. But did Hideo Kojima give your Starfield review a thumb up? Hey, what? You it came down. Hideo seal of approval. God Who's this dragon's deal? Why is what the dragon is this being dragon's the, deal? Being such a weenie. It's quit being, <laughs> being a weenie. <laughs> uh, but but so like I really struggled on my feelings about Starfield because there were times where I was having a, like a legitimately good time and I was enjoying myself. I love space. I like Skyrim, um, and th they do a lot really well. But at the end of the day, they just did. They did nothing special. Everything they mm -hmm. did was okay. Uh, and that was my review. Is just like it was. It was too much. Oh, now how do you aim your bow? Nope. All right, Chad. How do you aim your crossbow? Can you aim your crossbow? I'm gonna run out. Oh, of like I don't, I don't think there's like crossbow iron sights, are there? Isn't it, aren't the crossbow lock? Isn't the crossbow lock on? I don't know. There's really no way of knowing. There's no way of knowing. Uh, chat will know. And so, like you know, at the end of the day, my, my my review of Starfield is that it's just not enough. Like they don't do mm -hmm. anything special. It's not worth your time. They, they it's it's mired in mediocrity, and it's so full of mediocrity that you can't even necessarily enjoy any of the individual systems because yeah. they're connected to all of the other systems in 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 ways that make it not fun overall um crossbows cannot be aimed by the way in dark souls one damn it crossbows can do i have a bow i don't think i even have a bow well dang it uh i got him to move just by coming down here last time how did i do that Chat. Yeah, chat. Yeah, chat. Think about that chat. How did he move before? <laughs> I don't know why we're yelling at chat. I don't. Know. <laughs> I don't know why I do anything. So, so yeah, like that was the that was the nut and bolts of it. Is like, Starfield is adequate, and that's its biggest downfall. Is like it doesn't do anything overtly fun. <laughs> sure. <laughs> And uh, like I know that was the a thing I was kicking around here for a while, which is like the idea of is boring bad? Sure. Is boring a bad thing? Because Starfield is very boring in a lot of ways. Um, wait for him to blow fire to come down. Okay. All right, hold on. All right, he blew. He's blowing fire. 
and now he is done blowing fire, so now I come down. Because there, like, there are a lot of games... Oh, no, he has to be blowing fire while I come down. Damn it. Chat, if you don't know what you're talking about, stop saying things. Yeah. For shame. This is why I said God damn it, chat. Um, go up to the side. Chat. Oh my god. Uh, Rexalius, $5 dono. We got a rat sandwich update. Guys, it's all good if you don't remember the rat sandwich joke. It was very funny to both my wife and me. We appreciate the humor y'all bring to us. But what was the rat sandwich joke? You did, but you didn't <laughs> say what the rat sandwich joke. It's fine, guys. You just peeked. It was just the funniest thing you ever said. It's fine. We'll all remember it. We got matching rat sandwich jumpers made for Christmas. <laughs> right? So, uh, so yeah, like that's it for Starfield. It's just like it's it's just boring. It's just boring, mm -hmm. and I'm okay with boring games. I'm okay with a lot of boring games. Uh, like Stardew Valley is a is a boring game, but it has enough going uh, for it where I can make my own fun in the goals that I set for myself. Mm -hmm. And but I started doing that in Starfield. So it's like, oh, you you can build bases. You can go to any planet and build little bases to mine for materials, right? So, oh, okay, I'll build a really cool base. I found a cool planet. Like, oh, I want to build my base here. Well, what do I need? Oh, I need a ton of materials, so I have to go mine for materials. The act of getting those materials is really boring. Yeah. Um, and you can do that, like, peppered within the other systems of the game, but then you get lo loaded down with equipment. And, but, okay, I went through it. I pushed through, hey, I want to build a cool base, and I started to build my cool base. And then I get to a point where, like, okay, I have, I have a cool base. I have people stationed at my base. What can I do with my cool base? Oh, well, I can mine for materials. Well, what does that get me? It gets me more materials to build more bases. That's stupid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or it gets you money. And if it gets you money, like, there's significantly simpler ways to get money. So, I don't know. It's all, to me, it's all boring and stupid <laughs> my review of life it's all boring and stupid it's all boring and i had a similar thing uh the weirdly enough the game i was playing a bunch over the last few days was pokemon leaf green oh okay which yeah. was a game boy advance remake of uh, the original pokemon and it's because i hadn't played i'd only played the first two generations of pokemon and then the switch games so i missed like everything in the 2000s up until the switch and so uh, I started to play that. Really enjoyed myself. I got a great, great team. I had my Blastoise. I had my Gyarados. Yeah. I had my Kadabra. I had my Primeape. I had my Pikachu. I had my Flareon. Be I got all the badges. I got. I beat the, uh, the Victory Road. Beat the Elite Four. Whatever their names are. Yeah. I beat the game. And then it's like, uh, oh uh, no, your adventure has just begun. You need to go to these islands and solve their problems. And I was like, I don't think I do. <laughs> I think I'm. I think I'm done with your video game pokemon i had a great time but at a certain point i just had the, i just had my pokemon team it was just the team i was no new members were going to enter my team i'd locked down who my team were going to be relatively early on uh and they were just like well you just need to fight there's just more men you need to fight you need to get some rubies and some sapphires and there's a bunch of new pokemon you can collect and i was like i don't think i'm gonna do that i think i'm done i think yeah. we're gonna part ways on a real positive note we're gonna shake hands and then we're gonna leave. Yeah. So that's that's how I a mutual, a nice, amicable breakup with Pokemon. <laughs> yeah, and I think that's fair. I I always hated that the after the after the Elite Four area yeah. of Pokemon games because it's like no 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 my goal was to be was to be the best. You're yeah. telling me I am no longer the best. Yeah yeah it's not it's just I'm not big like post game when I yeah. roll credits I'm like kind of like all right I'm done or I'll just restart the game. Um. So that's where I'm gonna be. But I really, I'm, I'm probably gonna. I liked, I like Pokemon. I'm not gonna be like blazing through them every generation because I think uh, they follow a very similar format. Yes. Um, and so maybe I'll go back like once a year. Maybe I'll go back and play an old Pokemon game. But I, I, I liked, I liked going back. I missed a lot. I liked the music. I liked the towns. I remembered a bunch of stuff from Pokemon. I found one. I even took a picture of this. Um, there was a one one random Pokemon trainer I met on. Uh, on one of the routes mm -hmm. and she said quote i raise pokemon for protection because i live alone 
and I thought of like, what if you were a burglar and you broke into this woman's house and a fucking geo dude was there? <laughs> like you're rifling through her drawers, stealing her jewelry, and you turn around and a goddamn geo dude is there. Right. And you just get the shit kicked out of you by a geo dude. So that's great. I liked her. She was great. You get the shit kicked out of you by a geo. A geo dude. What about here's a movie, Sad Geo Dude in Space. So it's like a sad dude in space, but that dude is a geo dude. Uh, 100% on board. He's like, get me out of this rocket. I don't want to be here. Uh, Lampy with 100 bits. Thank you so much, Lampy. No one tell Marty what the rat joke is. If he wants to know, he'll need to watch the VOD. <laughs> Lampy, I'm banning you. Can't use money to bully me. You can't use money. They can, and they will. They just used money to bully they me. They just did. They just used money to bully you. Oh, that's great. Uh, Joshua Sanders with a 1999 dono. Thank you so much. That was the year The Matrix came out. Yeah. You did it. Fun fact. Uh, thank you so much, Joshua. Uh, gotta love Marty's positive vibes. What do you play to make you feel happy? XCOM normally does it for me. Does this game make you happy? Is this what you play to feel happy? Yeah, yeah. The the Any any of the Souls games are what I play to be happy. Mm -hmm. Because... Uh, because it reminds me that I am able to get over the difficulty with hmm. enough persistence. I like that. Yeah. Uh, I always go back to Katamari games. Oh, those are my like. If I'm sad, I just vi like. It's very colorful. I love the music, and it's very mindless rolling things up. But it's like <laughs> you see progression. You start out as like a little little rat ball. Yeah. And then you end the level as like you you've just killed an entire city, which is great. That's beautiful. I, yeah, know. the Katamar games are genuinely wonderful. Yeah. They're great. I think, I mean, yeah, it's just comfort food games also to, to feel happy. I think a lot of times it's just games you're nostalgic for, games that play a lot of old Super Nintendo games that make me happy, a lot mm -hmm. of old N64 games. Good stuff. Good stuff. Uh, and Humane Shield with a 499 dono. Thank you so much, Humane Shield. Jack's back. Thanks for returning Adventures 9 to the fans. Cannot wait for the heist in 2024. Are you and Omar designing any merch for fans to buy? We, merchandise. We are working on merchandise. Um, <laughs> uh, Omar and I have one very stupid idea that I really hope gets made. Uh, obviously, we are also letting El Cheshire do that because, you know, they are the ar professional artist. Yeah. Um, who, you know, works with us uh, and has been a, a phenomenal uh, partner in a lot of our art uh, and in a lot of Adventures 9. Uh, so we are letting, uh, we are uh, handing off the good art to El Cheshire, but Omar and I do have a really dumb idea that I hope gets made. So I love it. Uh, yeah, so. of course, all of our, uh, our, our merchandise currently is our, on uh, Shark Robot store uh, and we are uh, continually adding things. We're we're going to be adding a big, uh, big glob of new things in, yes. in the new year. So, Ooh, so many globs. For that. A lot of globs. Big old globs. Second wind branded glob. I don't know what a glob is, but <laughs> whatever it is, it's going to be great. All right, okay, I kind of want the mug, but I'm very. Uh, you 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 are uh, a princess about shirts. I'm a princess about mugs. Oh. Mugs have a very specific i think it's because i have kind of i've big i have big hands and so i need like i couldn't use your mug your mug has a specific it's like not a uniformed handle it's kind of you know it looks like half of a heart mm. like i need kind of like a big almost like yeah. industrial grade half of a circle like even the way i'm holding this i'm holding this weird where i'm holding only holding it with three fingers because it doesn't fit my hand really nice yeah yeah I, so kind of i'm with mug you stuff. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a bit of a mug snob. It's okay snob. to be a mug, mug. It's okay to be a snob about anything. I am a shirt snob, and so like we are talking with Shark Robot about like different shirt options to make sure that mm -hmm. like we have those available uh, for anyone who wants maybe a softer cotton shirt or, or different, you know, a, a different feel shirt. Chain mail shirt. The chain mail shirt, right? The classics. Yeah. yeah. All right, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna try to buff up this club as much as possible. I need. Three tight night shards. I love buffing up the club. I get buff in the club. All right. Well, that's that's all we can do. Oh, you get buff in this club. <laughs> uh, Lampy, 50 uh, or 50 bits, 50. 50 somethings. 50 twitchies. 50 shades uh, of gray. 
Nifty. Oh, hubba, hubba. Uh, Marty, as you haven't got it set up on Second Wind streams, you need to shout. We have to go back for 50 bits. On my personal streams, if someone donates 50 bits, it's a large picture of Jack Shepard, the main character from Lost. Yeah. And he yells, we have to go back, which is something he yells in a pivotal scene in the show. Yeah. But the something is happening, and I think... It's either haunted or I don't know what I'm doing because every time someone donates, it is slowly getting stretched out larger and larger and just like filling up the screen. Yes. And so um, Large Jack has kind of taken over the stream and he's, he's it's kind of terrifying that it is like legitimately getting bigger and I am not doing it and I don't know how it's happening. <laughs> uh, I kind of love it. Yeah. Oh, I don't it's a little Large it. Jack. Just a large uh, and Jack. Bungalow Bill with a $20 dono. What? Thank you so much, Bungalow Bill. Second win to the moon. I watched Dumb Money oh, the other day. Did you I watch wanna... Dumb Money? I did not watch Dumb Money, though. Uh, I it's on, my, it's on my list. Paul Dano. Paul Dano. Yeah, Paul a lot. Dano. Got a little Nick Offerman, a little Seth, uh, Seth Rogen. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's the story of the, the GameStop bonks thing that happened over covid and everything yeah. um it was uh it was fine there was like a there's a lot of these movies that are being made that like are very much trying to like I, I, I don't know if the social network was the first but like the social network and the big short and moneyball was like we can make something that isn't traditionally interesting and put enough interesting people on it mm. to make the story interesting and now a lot of movies are trying to do that but like they're just missing I don't know. I mean, Moneyball was like Steven Soderbergh, and and uh, uh, Social Network was David Fincher and Aaron Sorkin. And, right. Well, know. and and of course, like The Big Short was like partial, like just a documentary. It wasn't that was yeah the narrative. Yeah, yeah. Where it was more informational, presented in a very fun and unique way. Mm -hmm. So yeah. The that's the, the, yeah. the issue with like living in the era of. Uh, of YouTube uh, essays, especially like you know people who work in essay or who work in essays dealing with the NFTs or the big stonk yeah, yeah. market, where it's like you have to compete with someone who is more knowledgeable and can get something out faster because they don't have a movie to produce. Yeah, yeah, you have to compete with like your your folding folding ideas. Yes. Which I think is uh, hilarious that like someone needs to think like, wait, we need to compete with Dan. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, we can attach like whatever actors we want to this project, but will it be bigger than Dan? Will it be bigger than Dan, the guy who used to review movies as a puppet? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I'm a big fan of folding ideas. So. Same. Same, same, same. Uh, Snake in the Garden, two euro dono. Thank you so much, Snake Marty, Jack, FromSoft, Spoofs, Goofs. Thanks, guys. Yeah. It was just it was just five things in a row, and then well, that's what, those are all the things we're here for. Yep. Yeah. Uh, those are all the things we're here for, and we're making like really good progress. The after I beat the uh, the gargoyles, I do want to try something that I've never actually tried before. So we're gonna try it uh, for the first time here on stream. I'm gonna try to cheese the Capra Demon. Oh. I don't know if you are just... aware. Of the Capra Demon cheese. I'm not, no. I was just talking about the Capra Demon on some stream or something. There was a boss fight in a in a small room and the boss had two shitty dogs. Ah. And I was like, this is just a Capra Demon. Yeah. <laughs> like, this is just this is just a Capra Demon. It's just a Capra Demon and it sucks. It's a, it's like you know, it's not, like the boss isn't necessarily difficult. It's like the arena and the and the the gank. That and just it... the immediacy of like, oh god, like this is just happening right away. Yes. Oh yeah, it was Devil May Cry two. That was it, Tyrell. Yeah, we were playing Devil May Cry two, and there was a boss where it was a, a shitty cam, a, a small room with a shitty camera, and the boss had two dogs chasing you. Oh my god. Yeah. Uh, SVS Guru with a five euro dono. Thank you so much, SVS Guru. Starfield was as wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle. Lots of different ideas, but none Ooh. of them developed to any degree. Oh, fuck you, channel. Wide as an ocean, deep as a puddle. I like that. That's a really good phrase. Uh, and that's very apt for Starfield. Just, you know, like the universe of possibilities. But, but like what we were talking about with The Rock and um, Black Adam and seeing the seams is like you start going to all these different planets because you can go to any planet, any moon, right? And you start yeah. going to the different planets and you just see 
the copy paste you see the seams of the game yeah to where it doesn't feel it doesn't feel as big i i think the game would have been significantly stronger had they kept it to one universe one solar system like if we were just in the you know the uh our okay. is it solar system like what's what do you call our cluster of planets solar system Okay. Because right? it's everything that comes around it's around our sun. Oh, okay. Galaxy. Sure. Sure. No, solar system. I like that. If we would yeah. have kept it to just our solar system, just our cluster of planets, um, and re really refined all of those planets to be like something special and unique, it would have mm -hmm. been a significantly stronger game. Yeah, from the uh from the moment at that Xbox showcase at E3, like two years ago, I think it was 2022's E3, and they said there's going to be a thousand planets. I was immediately like, that's a bad idea. <laughs> like, that's yes. a terrible idea. That is a terrible idea because none of these planets are going to be interesting. And if you would have kept it, uh, I don't know how many, what are there, eight, nine planets, depending on if Pluto's been disowned. Uh, but then keep it to that. Put some moons there. That's yeah. fine. Have some space stations and stuff. That's oh, fine. And then you get but to like, do like the, the, uh, what do you call it? the asteroid belt the shenanigans belt. Yeah, yeah 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 you can you're in the future so you can you can you can create a couple new things there but like it's um i don't know that's one of the reasons like the outer wilds is uh is a relatively small and modest take on space but it feels so big and lived in and real because every inch of it is handled with care and it was placed there on purpose and it's not just like mm. we roll the planet and it's just it looks like the moon it just looks like the moon it goes on forever and there's really nothing to do yeah. here no there's some rocks that you can mine yeah uh, bye <laughs> yeah there there was just... one point i got to this in uh, uh, i got to a story beat in uh what do you call it uh, starfield uh yeah and you know like they give you the shouts in starfield you get mm -hmm. superpowers and uh, so I'm uh, I'm in a story mission in which I need to find like the hidden temple of superpowers, right? And we get there, uh, me and I, I'm I'm there with one of the NPCs, and the NPCs is like, ah, oh, this is amazing. This is you know undiscovered technology and blah blah. This hasn't been seen in centuries. And I pan over, and uh, like. Within visible range is one of those procedurally generated space stations where ships are landing and leaving. Where it's like, I can see a space yeah. uh, dock right there. There yeah. are ships coming and going. The ships can see this yeah. while yeah. they land. This game is broken. <laughs> you have broken all immersion of this being a special and unique yeah. place. It's like how uh, everyone always kind of pictures like the Sphinx and the the pyramids at Giza to be in the middle of the desert but then if you just turn around there's just the city right there and there's like a McDonald's like exactly. from a McDonald's window you can see the, the, the Sphinx yes. yeah. exactly whereas like guys like part of the story of Starfield is like we've done so much exploring that we don't care anymore we've explored mm -hmm. everything and that's why all of the bases are abandoned and overrun by space pirates because we just don't care about exploring anymore because we've seen everything and it's like well shit Guess what? That's at direct odds with your other part of your story where we can't find this one thing because we haven't explored enough. Fuck y'all. So. Classic fuck y'all. And SPS Guru with a five euro dono said it would have helped if you had to build and staff research bases to find the temples and artifacts or to build settlements for the colonists. Sure. Like it like no. if if any of those points uh, of the game would have had been had been necessary, then maybe they would have put a little more care into their implication into their implementations mm -hmm. right yeah, i'm curious to see uh uh timud uh, brings up no man's sky i'm curious to see if uh, starfield is one of those games that three four five years from now is going to uh get sort of a, a revival a critical reappraisal mm -hmm. uh, you know become something very different like uh, cyberpunk is now or like um no man's sky or you know any one of those games that have managed to kind of turn around uh, as opposed to kind of go under like your anthems or whatnot. Yeah. You'll yeah, see. I don't know. I don't know if like, I don't know if Starfield would need to be like fixed. Like if, if it's core is its problem. <laughs> yeah. Fallout 76. I feel like it had a, has a turnaround. Now the people who actually play, I think the only people who still like vehemently hate on fallout 76 haven't played it in years. 
because Holy it feels shit. like the people who do play it now are like, oh no, this is like they they fixed a lot of that shit. Oh my god, I don't remember this channeler and... being this hard. Why? Why is channeler being a big dick? There we go. Just being a big dick. Uh, and, right? Chandler the Chandler. Oh, R.I.P. Chandler Bong. You did not. You did not watch Friends, so you don't understand that the reference to Mrs. No, I know his name is Chandler Bing. Yes, and the character uh, in a in a famous episode where they were uh, where the friends uh, in uh, to decide who gets what apartment were playing a, a trivia game that Ross invented. Um, we we got to know that uh, oftentimes Chandler gets mail. Uh, gets his name wrong in mail delivered to him, including uh, famously Mrs. Chenandler Bong. Chenandler Bong. That's a good goof. Yeah, it's a good goof. Uh, friend, yeah, Friends, one of my favorites is Friends. I was just the right age for Friends, though. Sure. And and a big lover of sitcoms in general. Situation comedies. George Lucas, 100 bits over on Twitch. What? Mini review of Alan Wake 2. Okay. Everyone fucking strap in for a mini review of Alan Wake 2. All right, I'm ready. Pretty darn good all the way through. Not great. Game felt too long. Got bored in the middle, but things picked up near the end. Fifth best game of the year. Scariest game is still Lords of the Fallen. Fifth Wait, best Lord... game of the year. Yeah. Scariest game is Lords of the Fallen. Is Lords of the Fallen scary? Lords of the Fallen, and I know like this puts me at odds with uh, with Jamate, with uh, my lovely coworker, who I oftentimes agree with. Lords of the Fallen does some of the best uh, mechanical horror that you uh, that you will come across, in my opinion. Interesting. Oh. Well, well, explain. I haven't played Lords of the Fallen. Um, so they have, uh, you know, it's very similar to a Dark Souls. Mm -hmm. But after you die, uh, you go to the Dark World. You go into the Umbral. Yeah. You know. And you got a lamp, right? The umbral lamp. You got the umbral lamp, right. And so after you die, instead of just dying and restarting, you go into the umbral world, which basically gives you like one more try. Like keep mm -hmm. going. But the umbral world has forever respawning enemies. And the longer you are in umbral, the harder those enemies get to defeat. Uh, gotcha, gotcha. Uh, it also has more hazards. It has it, it's it's a more dangerous world, and so you get another attempt, but you are now in a significantly more dangerous world, and so like the the tension that the umbral world creates is phenomenal because you're already like on your last legs, and now oh I have another chance, but I'm in a world that is killing me harder. Yeah, uh, and it's phenomenal. It's a phenomenal uh, tension building mechanic. I like that. So, so as as a lover of these games, to me, the Umbral is what makes Lords of the Fallen special. Yeah, and I really like that sort of uh, risk reward of mm -hmm. like, how long do I stay in here? Because every second, this place is getting meaner and meaner, and like, mm -hmm. my time is finite here. But you know, you can go in there to farm. Uh, yeah, to farm souls. You, yeah. uh, there are some times where you have to go in there for certain uh, level traversal. Uh, where you have to go into Umbral, it forces you into the more dangerous area, and so it's it's to me it's great, uh, it's great and phenomenal. I know Jamate had some issues with the level design uh, of Lords of the Fallen, but yeah, I know uh, Jamate and Casey had issues with the level design, and then on the other side of the spectrum, Nick Nick said it was his favorite game of the year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, not my favorite, but definitely top, maybe top three of last year. Yeah. Uh, for me, just because uh, Tears of the Kingdom also came out last year. What a what a game! What a picture! Oh. Fucking fucking what a oh. game! Dragons? Are you kidding me? Dra <laughs> Uptown. Uptown girl? What? Oh my god! Oh, Uptown you said get out of town. Girl. I said get out of town. I, yeah, I, heard, I've, I've... I heard Uptown. Uptown. Yeah, I didn't do that side quest where where you where you get to listen to Uptown Girl in Hateno Village. <laughs> Uh, Stickman Grit. Philo, don't know. Thank you so much. Stickman. Remember, Jack, third gap from the left for Capra Demon. What does that mean? Third I think that's, that has something to do with the cheese. That you're planning to do after the gargoyles? Yes. Is there something you can, like, be, kill the boss without going into the room? Yes. That's is that, okay. The cheese that I've seen that I want to attempt is uh, poisoning the Capra Demon. Hmm. 
is uh, theoretically you can. Uh, oh, oh, oh my God! Oh, excuse you. Poison with what? Poison bombs? Uh, dung piles. Oh, God, he just fill his little, turn his little chamber against him by filling it with rancid shit. Yes, Genius. and so you can throw dung piles in there. Genius. And uh, poison the camper demon, and just and you basically just sit and wait. From what I've seen, I've What's never done it. Oh fuck! Oh fuck! Ghouls. I really should put on armor. <laughs> I've just realized yeah, you've been, been <laughs> you've been extremely naked. I've just been extremely naked. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna attempt. I've never done it before, and and so yeah, you have to like, oh, I need a bow then too, because you have to line up your sights in a certain place and then throw dung piles, and then you just sit and wait. Living the, the dream, plan. living the absolute dream. We are living the absolute dream, because uh, I, I I know there's another way to do it with bombs. Oh, I'm going the wrong way, uh, but. I've tried the bomb cheese before and didn't get it to work, so we're going to try dung. We're going to try dunging it up. When in doubt, toss some shite. Uh, SVS Guru, another five euros. Thank you so much. We stopped exploring because we've seen everything. That's how the player feels. <laughs> yeah, in, uh, in, in Starfield. What a bummer. I would have loved for that game to come out and everyone just been super happy. I love, uh, I like, I like uh, Baldur's Gate coming out and everyone's happy. Yeah. Like, even if it's not my kind of game, I just like people being stoked about stuff. Absolutely, um, absolutely. Yeah. It's, uh, on paper, it's everything I wanted. That's part of, part of my, my, my saltiness, if you will, about the game is, like, I, I love space. I love blue-collar space. Yeah. You know, th- Things like the ex- oh my god, I fucking suck at this game. Uh, things <laughs> like, things like the Expanse or, or uh, Leviathan Down, uh, like that mm-hmm. series, uh, Alien Aliens, like blue collar workers in space, is a theme that I fucking love so hard. Mm-hmm. And so the idea of getting to play in in like it's basically a a, a, a expanse ish game where you're like oh we're mining asteroids we're dealing with different factions we're going through space sure but it's kind of mundane at this point i fucking love that yeah (laughs) and it's still so disappointing so i went in with the rosiest colored glasses Yeah, and it felt like this was one of those, like, oh, you were the chosen one. Like, yeah. this was the game that was supposed to be the game that finally, like, fulfilled that promise. <laughs> and and it just feels, it feels like they didn't care. Yeah, yeah. It, it feels like they were doing the, the algorithm math of, of, uh, of games. Well, yeah. people like Skyrim. And people like Space. Yeah, it also feels like when a game is in development for that long, any game, not just Bethesda, like, it just feels like the sort of objective is going to change course throughout development uh, because of how trends change over the years and Mm. leadership coming in and out. And so, um, I don't know, it just, it feels like with when development of a game goes on for that long, whatever you intended to do at the start is most likely not what the finished product is. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, and you know, I uh, I see people talking about the outer worlds in chat, and I liked yeah. a lot of the outer worlds. Uh, I felt it was a little a little too goof. <laughs> sure, a, yeah. I, I wanted a, a like I think my I I was playing a character like with a giant fucking space hammer, uh, and so I felt like my personal immersion as far as like that blue collarness was uh, was going was a little out. Yeah. Look. Oh my God, Marty. Uh, Marty. Tian Bay's says, "Have you watched Scavengers Reign? I love Scavengers Reign. And Jack, if you would like a program, yeah, that uh, uh, really captures that that feeling of um, not the mundanity of space, but like the workmanship of space, while still having kind of the majesty of the planet you're on being." So otherworldly, uh, uh, Scavengers Reign is one of the best TV shows of the year. Uh, it's an okay. animated series on HBO Max. Um, I think it was only like ten or twelve episodes, um, but but genuinely, uh, genuinely amazing stuff. Uh, I just wrote it down. I wrote go. it down. Scavengers Reign. Uh, yep. Do I? I not have anything? 
I ju- I'm, I'm like looking for equipment. I, I have picked up apparently. <laughs> have I just not picked anything up this whole I've, time? I apparently have zero like clothes. <laughs> How is that even possible? How is like, that even impressive. possible? Right. I have <laughs> zero items of clothing. Um, because I am getting wrecked by the fucking. Did you like gargoyles. get rid of everything on the last stream? I might have. That, like as a goof. That sounds like something stupid I would do. Yeah. Well, no, but I, I, I also started as uh, depraved or... as the depraved class. So yeah. Yeah. Hold on. I, I, I also like. I don't think I did any of like the standard looting of the area. Yeah, right. Oh, like even uh, Nudberg. Yeah. Right. So we'll get there. We'll find. Maybe we'll find some stuff. Yeah, I feel like there's you get uh, less clothing options in this game than you do in uh, the later ones. Oh, okay. the later ones, they're they they come hot and heavy. Yeah, they they definitely upped their their fashion. Mm-hmm. They realize that that's a thing that people like. People like yeah. their fashion, and they show it off, and then that's free advertisement for the game. And mm-hmm. boom, fashion. Uh, Urbanim, thank you so much for 50 Zwoti Dono. Just popping in to say hi. <clears throat> oh, oh. Wow, Jesus. Wow, are you okay? <laughs> really, ran, really ran into a wall there. <laughs> uh, just popping in to say hi and hope you had some t- uh, nice time off over the last few days. It's still the second day of Christmas here. No, not Schmingus Dingus. So I'll catch the VOD later. Have a good one. Thank you so much. Uh, I thought <laughs> so there's a Polish Schmingus holiday. Dingus. There's a there's a Polish holiday called Schmingus Dingus, and I what? thought it was the day after Christmas, but it turns out it's the day after Easter. Oh, but I kept no. talking about how much I love saying Schmingus Dingus. It's a great thing to say. I I assumed that was you doing a goof. No, that wasn't me doing a goof. Schmingus Dingus. Schmingus Dingus right. is real, everybody. So it's like a it's the day after Easter, but then I uh, I looked it up, and like the whole thing of the day is like boys are supposed to bully girls that day and throw water on them, and I'm like, well, this is just a mean holiday. <laughs> I guess it just seems like maybe we shouldn't have this holiday. Go to a girl you like and throw water on her. Like, well, we don't need to do that. Yeah, no, thank you. No, thank you. I'm gonna no. give this one more attempt, and then I'm going to unhollow myself and uh, and call Mr. Solier for for some help. Raise that son. If uh, biscuits and barbecue. Biscuits and welcome barbecue. to the Green Gang. Welcome to the Green Gang. Just great. Great name. I love yeah. biscuits and barbecue. And biscuits and barbecue with a $10 dono. Thank you so much. Throwing some extra in since I forgot to switch my sub over. Also, we should have gotten The Expanse, the game, instead of Starfield. And Frasier is the best sitcom with Niles as the GOAT character. Uh, Frasier so. is the best sitcom. I agree. Oh, wow. Frasier, Frasier, well, Frasier is a phenomenal sitcom. Uh, best. Ugh. I, I said that too, too uh, hastily. Frasier is a phenomenal sitcom that I could uh, rewatch over and over and over again. Uh, and Tiberius Kirk, I know there is no uh, N in Schmingus Dingus. Uh, if you watched last week's uh, Firelink podcast, I believe it was Firelink, I talk about, uh, I go in depth about how I've pronounced Schmingus Dingus incorrectly my entire life, but I'm uh, in my mid 30s and I'm not going to change anytime soon. And Schmingus Dingus is just a great sounding yeah. couple of words. A hundred percent. Yeah. Sh- so it's Schmigus Dingus? Schmigus Dingus, I believe. It's uh, S-M-I-G-U-S. Schmigus um, Dingus. D-Y-N-G-U-S. Love it. Poland's out here wowing out with her words, let me tell you. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, no, I love it. Yeah. Also, by the way, uh, for, for any big Frasier heads out there, if you had not, if you have not seen... Uh, do a little Google search for Frasier Columbo. Excuse me. Someone made a little, uh, a tiny little comic book in which uh, Frasier, uh, Frasier and Niles are uh, convicted of murder and Columbo has to solve the case. Incredible. And, uh, and it's a great little comic. There's also a Frasier Bloodborne comic out there. How? <laughs> that equally is uh, is beautiful. So uh, if you're if you're a Frasier head like I am, find the Frasier Bloodborne mashup and the Frasier Columbo mashup. Great stuff. There you go. There's a lot. Of, again, never watch Frasier. However, I'm there's one image that I just love, and it's an Evangelion, a Neon Genesis Evangelion goof, 
and it's two frames of Frasier, and there's one. It's Niles in a hospital bed, uh-huh. and he's surrounded by like Frasier. I don't know who the woman is. The other main character, Roz. and then a doctor, Roz. Roz. Oh, well, Roz. it's either Roz, uh-huh. who is Frasier's uh, radio producer, or Daphne, who is uh, Frasier's uh, live-in elder help uh, to help with his father slash Niles's love interest. Probably her, because she's holding Niles' hand in Ah, the hospital bed. Great. And the doctor in the first frame says, pilot the Ava Frazier, and then it's a close-up of Niles, and he looks very sick in the bed, and it says, or Niles will have to do it again. And that's in Evangelion. They kept telling Shinji to pilot the Ava, or else we're going to send Rey back in to do it again when she's in the hospital bed. And I'm like, this is the dumbest goof. And there's like three people who would find it funny, and I'm one of those three people. So there you go. And I'm one of those three people. Yeah, that's the important thing. Uh, and Beast March with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much. Schmingus Dingus sounds better than Tinder. You should get a dating app called Schmingus Dingus. And you can only go on dates the day after Easter. Ooh. Yeah. Nope. nope. Okay, we beat the gargoyles this time. Yeah. We didn't need to uh, get the yeah. Solaire. We beat the Gargoyles. It makes things so much easier once you, if you can beat the first one before the second one comes out. And yeah, yeah. Just took a little like bit of That's almost all the, all the dual bosses. Yes. You can get one of them. If the game can forget that there's two of them and one's just like hanging out in the corner and you can get them down to one, then it's great. Well, and you know, it's it's also like the rhythms of the enemy attacks for each not not just for each enemy, but for each game is like slightly weird and different. And uh, I needed to capture some Elden Ring footage for uh, for a recent bite size that we did. Uh, you know, Matt reached out to me. He was like, "Hey, you play a lot of Elden Ring. Do you have like a later Elden Ring character? I need a bunch of footage of different weapons." And I was like, "Oh, do I? Oh, do I?" And so, you know, like I play, I, and after I captured the footage and sent it off, I was like, well, I guess I could play a little Elden Ring. <laughs> I mean, it'd be rude not to. I mean, right? I opened, I opened up Elden Ring. I should probably play a little bit. Yeah. And so, like, just playing that little bit of Elden Ring really throws off your Dark Souls play. Then all of a sudden you blink and you have long fingernails and a beard and you're like, what year is it? Uh, yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what happens when you yeah. start playing one of these games. This is also uh, the Prepare to Die edition, not the remastered version, so I can't slide down ladders. Uh, interesting. Why are you playing this and not? The uh, this is the one I have on the PC. I don't. I don't have the remaster on the PC. I have the original PC version. Uh, I probably should get the remastered version because it definitely fixed a significant amount of jank. Yeah. But this is just the one I have. That'll be our next funding goal after Adventures Nigh Season Four on location. It'll be. Seven dollars. <laughs> seven. I need seven dollars so I can buy. <laughs> so I can buy a game that I have played a million. I also yeah. have the remastered version on my Switch. Uh, so I could just play it on the Switch, but you know, I'm here. Purging exactly. stone. Oh, I don't need a purging stone. I'm good. Uh, Keeper Dace, hundred bits. Thank you so much. Woo! Victory achieved. First try. First try. First try. Yeah. Everybody, we did it. First try. <laughs> Uh, and then George Lucas with another 100 bits. Thank you so much, George Lucas. Speaking of good games, every day we should take a moment to appreciate how good Red Dead Redemption 2 was. I agree. I loved Red Dead 2. Uh, yeah, I liked a lot of Red Dead Redemption 2. I never finished Red Dead Redemption 2 because it is a very long game. It is. Uh, but I liked a lot of it. That's a game that has some boring moments that I loved. Ooh, for, hey, that's, that's a good just, just traveling from place to place, not a whole lot going on, but just soaking in the sights. Yes, I think like that's something that can definitely fill up the boring times. Like especially if you're camping at night in yeah. Red Dead Two, and it's you know, like just you and your horse, and it's beautiful, and you feel like a cowboy, even like though actual role playing. It's yeah. boring, yeah. Yeah, because I me, mean, you know, what? sometimes life is boring, <laughs> right? Sometimes it's just you, your horse, some banditos, and some banditos, some banditos, banditos. Uh, so are we cap redeeming now? We are cap redeeming now. I'm going to uh, upgrade a little bit. I'm going to buy some dung, and then we are going to attempt to cap redeem. And I might need to, like, 
on my other monitor here. Look it up. So, and then maybe around noon we'll take a little uh, a little uh, stretchy break. Okay. Uh, you know, I'll I'll put on the stream starting soon, and we'll take a we'll stretch our legs, uh, refill yeah. waters. Oh man, I got so many liquids I need to refill. Liquid. Uh, you'll need a bow. Yes. Oh, I will also need a bow. That is. Oh, thank you, thank you. I I forgot that I will need. Oh, that a was bow. chat. That was not. That was not me. Oh. Okay. <laughs> thank you, chat. So we got to visit a couple merchants. The dung merchant, and then uh, maybe the uh, the merchant in Undeadburg here has uh, has a bow I can buy. So that's where we'll head next. Oh yeah, Snake of the Garden says. Oh wait, how long are you going? Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go. I don't know. We don't have like an actual ending time, but uh, we decided we we're just gonna do a longer than. This is the only stream today, and I don't know. We're just gonna go. We're gonna is... go until we're no longer inspired. It's the only stream today. It's also been a hot minute since I have streamed in general, and it's yeah. like, oh, I just want to stream and play, and it's you know, it's Christmas. It's how it's you've the been doing so season. much work in the in the legal minds, y'all. In the legal beagle minds, y'all. Not... Papa Jack uh, has been doing so much behind the scenes work to make sure that we, you know, do silly things like get incorporated. <laughs> Uh, that I haven't had a lot of time to just, just to play and do goofs. Uh, so I uh, this we're, so we're going a little bit longer so I can play and do goofs. Uh, I hope mm -hmm. that's cool with everyone. I approve. Oh great! As long as Marty approves. Exactly. Marty is our vi uh, VP of goofs. Oh my God! I report to the commander in goofs. Yes. The commander in spoofs. I believe uh, that makes me the president of goofs. Which Incredible. Is a role that I take uh, very seriously. <laughs> what it, instead of like swearing on a Bible, you're like swearing on like, like a whoopee what, cushion. Whatever the, the John the whoopee cushion. I was gonna be like one of those bathroom guides to like puns or whatever. <laughs> oh, I take have a big shit and I need to learn some puns. I have several of those bathroom guides. Jack, yeah, this is just like, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play some stuff that I want to play because uh, yeah. I don't get an opportunity to do that as often as I once did. So and hopefully, that opportunity will come back once all the legal beagle stuff is under. Yes, under, under, uh, and then especially, and there's gonna be a little gap between like uh, Adventures Night season uh, three will be done, and then before we film four, like ooh, we're gonna get you, we're gonna get you some streams. We're gonna, we're gonna line up some HPD streams. Some HPD streams. Yeah, I'm sure. Oh my God, there's gonna absolutely be some HPD games coming out the first few months of the year. Hundred percent. Got gotta you know give a HPD to all of our homies, all of our video game homies. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, and Nick wants to know where does Jimate fit in the, in the spoof and goof cabinet? He's uh, uh, secretary of the UN, United Nations of spoofs and goofs. Oh yeah, he's, he's our ambassador. He's our, our ambassador of spoofs because someone needs to be there for dry British spoofs and goofs. And Marty mm -hmm. and I cannot fit that. We cannot no. fill that role. Every time some Yahtzee keeps bringing up these shows and I know they're, they're not real. And every time they're real, every time I'm like, this one's definitely not real. And it's like, nope, that was real. <laughs> that was real. They're all real because, uh, you know, they only, their shows only last six episodes. And so they can have 1 million shows. Yeah. What a time to be alive. What a time. Uh, Lampy. 101 bits. Thank you so much, Lampy, with a waka waka. I like Fossey Bear. I'm going to be honest. I know a lot of people say shit about him, and I know he, 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 people try to cancel Fossey Bear. But I love him. <laughs> I don't know if they did. They probably didn't. I feel like Fossey's fine. <laughs> Fossey is uh, absolutely fine. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Lampy with another 101 bits. Is Marty the CGO, Chief Goof Officer, or Chief Goo Officer, if he's thinking about Gooigi? I'm always thinking about Gooigi. We're always thinking about Gooigi. Yeah, not just Marty, America. America, America would be better off instead of Biden or Trump if uh, Guigi was our was our next president for four years. If, if a if a uh, a non sentient pile of goo were our commander in chief, yeah. we might yeah. be better off. Exactly. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> no comment. <laughs> Rip. Uh, and Snake of the Garden with a two euro dono. Thank you so much. Papa Jack and Sicko Marty, a Christmas miracle. Sicko Marty? Yeah. Um, uh, the, the, I, I have a sicko emote in my. Do you know that sicko uh, 
I think it came from like an onion cartoon, but there's like a black and white cartoon of a guy looking in a window. Yes. He's like up even Tom and he just has the word sicko on his shirt. Yes. That's one of my emotes on my on my stream. I just like that man. I like he's kinda of like a weird little pervert. He's looking weird through the window. Pervert. And, yeah. and he says something too, right? He's like, yeah. He's yeah, I think like, he says yes. 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 <laughs> like he's really enjoying whatever sicko yeah. thing he is watching. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah, you got me. You 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 moved me uh you moved me to pro sicko. I'm pro sicko. Pro -sicko. Yeah. Pro uh not to be confused with prosecco. Which it's like fancy champagne that isn't champagne or something. Is that what it is? I I honestly don't. bubbly. It's bubbly. Like you can make like a mimosa, a uh, Jason mimosa with prosecco oh. orange juice. I've heard the name before. I don't know what it is. That's my prosecco knowledge. Oh. All right. Bottomless mimosa. That could be a podcast where we just talk about Jason Momoa movies every week. <laughs> Down. I mean, like we'd eventually run out because I don't think he's been in that many movies. Has he, he has not been in that many movies. No. He's uh, like a surprising number of movies and a surprising number of like, maybe not surprising number of bad movies, but he is in several like, like, is this, does this movie need to exist? Yeah. Did this need to happen? What was, what was his like, uh, his Nemo movie? His like, Neverland, not Neverland, but uh, the, the sleep slumber. Yeah, the Netflix movie about like you know the Dreamland, and he was talking about that movie about how that was like his favorite acting role because he got to play like the character that he's always wanted to play and like the character that is most like him as a real person. Uh, and all I could think of like, oh man, you must be a shitty person. Like I no longer think you are cool. Yeah. <laughs> uh, if this is the kind of person that you, this is all you want to be, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, it was called Slumberland. Oh, there you go. Which is also the name of a mattress store. Nice. Maybe it's the biopic of of the the formation of that mattress store. Nice, I like it. How many standard arrows? I will buy ten standard arrows. Nice. Do you have any pants? Uh, you have chain leggings. I don't want chain. Oh leggings. my god, a Stymu. HBD, everybody. Happy Boxing Day. Incredible. Happy Today's an HBD. You did it. You did it, everyone. Thank Congratulations. <laughs> can't believe we did it. I can't believe it's not butter. Uh, neither can I. Because it was margarine. Because they tricked us. Oh, I, I, it took me a while to remember where I was going next. So, uh, a who, who am I finding? Where's that man's little garden? His walled garden? Who? Walden? Capper Demon. Capper, Capper Demon. Capper, oh, right, right. Yes. Oh, if you throw, in, if you kill him with dung, Crapper Demon. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, no. I got to go get the dung still, but oh, that's fine. <laughs> Just finished reading the Fraser Colombo comic. It was literal perfection. Yes. Uh, as someone who is a big fan of Fraser and a big fan of Colombo, the uh, the artist writer of that comic somehow managed to like capture both voices perfectly. Uh, did you see any of Poker Face? Uh, yes, I watched familiar? all of Poker Face and thoroughly yeah. enjoyed it. So, I feel like that's a that's an easy reco for Columbo fans. Oh yeah. Uh, Snake in the Garden, Marty. Can you ask Jack if he's considered? Cassette Beasts, have you considered? Uh, not only have I considered, I have played Cassette Beasts. What are we, pro? Con? Uh, we are, I guess, I guess con because at the end of the day, I'm, I'm a little ambivalent. Mm. It's, it just didn't scratch that itch, that, that Pokemon's itch mm -hmm. that, I was, uh, that I was looking for. And I think, like... In any game like that, where you are very, very clearly just like I'm making Pokemon, but it's different. Mm -hmm. You gotta, you gotta nail that. You gotta nail that hard. Yeah. I don't know if anyone. If it's anyone hard. Has. It's hard. There's like a sort of like a, a je ne sais quoi to it that's hard to put down. Like what? What is yeah. so magical about the good Pokemon games? Like, like uh, something that I played recently, Moonstone Island which mm. is a game that I very much enjoyed is, you know, Pokemon meets Stardew Valley right. uh, as a deck building game. Mm -hmm. And that at, at least adds that other element of the Stardew Valley-ness where it's like, oh yeah, yeah, I get this. 
I get yeah. what's happening here. This is interesting. This is, oh, no, am I going to die? I didn't die. Okay, great. This is unique. This is fresh. This is giving me some purposes. But Moonstone Island uh, uh, has a cardinal sin, which oh. is it is a Pokemon-like in which your Pokemon don't evolve. Oh. What's going on here? What's that going on That feels like here? one of the core tenants. Yes, by the way. Uh, so, like, you can't... I, I got some really cool uh, spirits, is what they call them in Moonstone Island, and I was like, oh, my God, I can't wait to see what this turns into. Uh, nope, they just don't evolve. That's a bummer. Which is a big bummer. Because because uh, I, I liked a lot of that. And so then, uh, basically, what, what ends up happening in Moonstone Island is you hit a point in which you kind of stop caring because yeah. you, your, your Pokemon aren't growing as you would want them to, and... Leveling them up is a giant pain in the ass. Uh, so yeah. you hit a you hit a wall. Yeah, I'm. Uh, that's that's a thing with Pokemon games. Is I, uh, I I wish that there was a system that encouraged me to experiment more with different lineups. With like gave me a to get outside my comfort zone because just very quickly, usually in those games, I kind of know the guys I'm going to be using for the remainder of the game. And um, <laughs> it just feels like a very static party, which is silly in a game that has hundreds of cool looking monsters. And I keep getting new ones, but I'm like, well, I already have my six. So I don't know. You're not going to make a roster. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Which is something that as someone in the chat mentioned persona. Um, and I think persona does a pretty good, uh, like it handles it by constantly having you, you know, combine uh, two personas to make something new. So, you are constantly kind of killing your darlings and you never really get comfortable with one because it's like, well, I want to combine these two to have one that's five levels higher. And um, I don't know, that's not something Pokemon will do, but I think that kind of keeps things fresh for me. Sure, sure. Oh, oh fuck. This um, this oh, yeah. Like, uh, yeah, Moonstone Island, it's coming to Switch, they said in 2024, um, but yet only released on uh, PC, I believe, as of now. Oh yeah, no, and I I still like there there is still a lot of good that can be said about it. Uh, the the unfortunate parts about it are the same unfortunate parts that are in Stardew Valley and in Pokemon, which is kind of the end game, or you know, like the Stardew Valleyness of it is like the end game is kind of when you feel like stop stopping play, right? Yeah, yeah. Where it's like, I just hit a point where it's like, oh, I have a good farm. I have my, my barn with all my spirits. I have a good system here. I've explored a lot. And now I want to focus on battling. Battling isn't that strong. Okay, well, maybe I want to focus on relationships. Uh, guess yeah. what? There's no fucking marriage option. You can be uh, going steady with someone. Can't marry them. B-B-S. B-B-B-S. My waifu... Uh, can't marry, can't marry him. Point. Guess What's what? the point? What's the point? That's why I play these games. Is I wanna, I want a waifu. What if I? I don't want a girlfriend foo. I want a waifu. You know what I'm saying? My waifu. <laughs> so, so it's it's a little bit of that like, uh, what do you call it? What do you call it when it's like it's it's a little jack of all trades, right? It's a little jack mm, of all yeah. trades, master of none. Uh, which in this sense is a negative. Yeah. Uh, where I want to, I want each system to be a little bit deeper, and then you go, well, then why don't you just play the version of this that's deeper? Oh yeah, that's fair. Yeah. What? A, I, yeah, I feel like what? If, what if Pokemon? Pokemon needs to start having waifus. Some waifus in Pokemon games. Get some. Waifus also, in what if the whole thing about Pokemon <laughs> is you're a foster trainer? And so you fought, you you raise the Pokemon, but there's people all over the world who are in need of those Pokemon, and so you are fostering the Pokemon, and then you're like, uh, "Oh, we we need a Pikachu in this village for to to help with the electricity," and so you Ooh. give your Pikachu to this village. You know, like you can go back and visit them every once in a while, but like the 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 amount you've built it up uh, impacts the the impact it can have where you give it. Oh, I love that idea. Yeah, because then you would have to be be rotating your Pokemon, but what you did with them matters, but then you're actually helping out the world by, um, you know, allowing them to sort of grow on their own and go somewhere else. Oh, I love that idea. That's very yeah. fun. 
That's I'm going to put scary. in my two weeks and see if I can get a job at the Pokemon company. <laughs> yeah. To be easy. Do it. That should yeah. be. I mean, that should be easy. If you and they're that. notorious for taking risks in their games and not resting on their laurels and like really changing up the formula. So, <laughs> yeah. 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 No, I think there's there's a lot of uh, so yeah here here is the Capra Demon area and so like basically it's somewhere around here where you have to like aim your bow at just the right spot. Uh, but we need to we need to get our dung piles first. So sure. Uh, so we're gonna buy our dung piles, then we're gonna take a little break, and then we'll come back for more Dark Souls. Perfect. Uh, Perfect. And that is the plan for today. Yes. Yeah, so remember when we we're gonna leave for a little while, and yeah. when it says. It's gonna, it's gonna say stream starting soon. It's not a lie because the stream's gonna be starting back up soon. Correct, correct. It is not. We're not gonna be leaving for like an extended period of time. No, no, no. We are gonna leave for like three to five minutes to yeah. re to refresh and relieve. Yeah. Uh, and then we make will our own back. to make our own dung piles. Am I right? <laughs> <laughs> if you are able to do that in three to five minutes, God bless, sir. <laughs> I, I, a lot of fiber. I am a lot not. of fiber. <laughs> Uh, SVS Guru with a 10 euro dono. Thank you so much, SVS Guru. Game mechanic idea. Feed Pokemon to other Pokemon to make them stronger. Could integrate it into the cooking mechanic. Certain Pokemon dishes are more effective. You monster. <laughs> you absolute monster. By the way, that, is, that would be like... It, what we're, what, the other thing we're talking about here is, is a more hardcore Pokemon game and they are treated a la NPCs from Soul Games, where there is only one of them. Now, imagine this. Like, imagine wow. there's only, like, there's very few electric-type Pokemon. Yeah. And, you know, it can be really strong and really pivotal, pivotal in a fight, or you can give it to that village because they need electrical reasons. And then you get to make, like, moral pro-con decisions. I like it. I like it. And then, yeah, one Pokemon is a lion type, and you also have, like, a sheep type, and you could feed the sheep type to the lion type. You won't find another sheep type, right? Maybe it'll make the lion stronger. Maybe the sheep will get stronger eventually. Ooh, now we're talking. Would you imagine Poke Souls? Poke Souls. Get Miyazaki on the phone. How many dung... Well, I will, I will also spend uh, my break time Googling how this is done. <laughs> so I'm going to buy ten dung pies... Which you know, that's a perfectly normal. Is, it like thing a, to say. is there like a bogo deal on them? <laughs> I don't believe there. I'm. I just bought ten because I did. Sure. Because why not? Okay, great. Thank you, lady. Uh, an indie mouse in the chat. Jack and Marty for Christmas. What more could you want? Wait. Thank you so much. Mouse. Wait a minute. I see a little check mark next to in. Is that the oh, indie, indie mouse? mouse? Is, is, is titular indie mouse. Indie Mouse, indie. Uh, who is a, a YouTuber who I only found recently, uh, apologies that I haven't found you earlier, uh, makes phenomenal uh, videos. Agreed. Uh, everybody go check out Indie Mouse. Uh, uh, amazing roguelike series. Uh, great job. Uh, by the way, I just got your Mouse Cult shirt, uh, the one with the, the orange one with the little deer uh, skull on it. Amazing shirt. Great yeah. job. Great job, yeah. Mouse. <laughs> Uh, a creator who I've been really enjoying lately, and thank you for making such wonderful content, Indie Mouse. Thanks for thanks for ranking the saw traps. You did the you did <laughs> the work. Right. No one else was brave. You did the work. <laughs> yeah, phenomenal stuff. Uh, always enjoy your your playthroughs. I found many a, many a good metal band and many a good game based on your recommendation. What about that metal band that we were talking about earlier whose name I already forgot? Sleep Token. Uh, Sleep, yep, Token Sleep Token was a recommendation from Indie Mouse. Uh, Currents. Uh, if, if anyone is interested in some nice uh, some nice speed metals, Currents. Great. Great. All right. I just died, and so that is a great place to take a little break. Now that the legendary Indie Mouse is in chat, we are taking a three to five minute break. We will be back. Everyone do your stretching. Do, do your stretching. stretching. You all at home do your stretching and get your liquids. Get you like it's we we will be back in three to five minutes, uh, uh, and then we're gonna throw some dung, y'all. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be great. Where's uh oh here it is. All right, and we're going back. We'll, we'll see you in three to five minutes. Uh, bye. Bye, Rod. See you soon.
ha, ha, ha. We're back. It was beautiful. Thank you. We're back. A dinosaur story. Uh oh. Wait, did I buy it? I bought my fire. Oh fuck. Yeah, you bought ten of them. Or dungies? I bought ten dungies. That's right. All the guides are for how to cheese the Capra Demon with firebombs. I bought dungies. Uh, so I hope it's the same. But we'll see. I just, I did realize though, like, oh, that's right. I was going to make my way back to Fireling Shrine. That's, that's why. Hmm. Um, I was just wondering why I was over here. If because I died because I fell off a cliff. Cliffs will get you. Cliffs will get you, y'all. All right, we are back. Where were we? Uh, we were talking. What's, uh, you know, uh, Indie Mouse is a, a YouTuber I have found relatively recently, like in the history of my life. Uh, who, who's someone that you found recently, Marty, that you have, uh, whose work you've been enjoying? That is, a, that is great, and I'm, I'm glad you asked. Uh, Annie Austin is my latest reco. Any Austin, A N Y underscore Austin, oh, all right. putting it in uh, YouTube. I can't, I can't seem to send links in Twitch. So, oh no, oh no, oh no. Well, I don't know. Went through. I don't know if if I can actually send. I could probably send. Them. <laughs> I, I just like, like, oh no. Uh, Any Austin is a channel uh, I've really been enjoying. Uh, does uh, this uh, a, a bunch of different videos, but one thing is uh, he has a series. It's an unemployment survey, mm -hmm. and he goes to towns in games. And he wanders around them and tries to figure out what percentage of the town is unemployed. Oh, my God. And he has one, speaking of, one going through all the towns in the Kanto region of Pokemon. <laughs> in uh, going through those. One, yes. he's going through all the Skyrim towns. One, he goes through... Uh, he goes through uh, the the main uh, the, the the main hub area in Mario Sunshine. He goes through some of the High Rules, like the Castle Towns and yes. stuff. Uh, but he's really funny. Um, he's he's just he's he's got this very dry humor. He's just really he's a really funny dude. And so I've been uh, loving his channels. And he's one of those channels that uh, like when I when I found him a couple months ago, he was at like a hundred k subs. He's at like one hundred sixty now, so he's definitely hey. on the up and up. Great stuff. Big fan of any Austin. Highly recommend. I, I like I like that kind of bullshit like that kind of <laughs> bullshit of like here's you know something that uh, the that adds to the or, or adds slash takes away from the verisimilitude like the let's if if we take this out of a video game ca game to context and we just look at this town as a functioning village it yeah. would not function yeah yeah <laughs> so, like you in pallet town you're like this is just it's your house your rival's house and professor oak's lab right. like what that's that that's the town like who are these adults in this town and, like in order to go grocery shopping you need to go through the dangerous woods full of things that will kill you <laughs> rats and birds and, yeah <laughs> yeah that's great uh yeah, we just put up a video yesterday that I watched this morning of, uh, again, uh, thematically uh, appropriate, going around Skyrim and trying to find nice, peaceful, quiet places in Skyrim. Oh. And so just like random little nooks that he really likes when he talks about them. Just those kind of things. You know, Good vibes it, on the vids. That's what is that's something that we've talked about recently is just doing like a, a vibe check. Yeah, series, yeah. Where we just walk around and vibe check the yeah. uh, the area which i love yes yeah yeah because I, I think that sort of sprung to mind when uh, talking about majula how majula dark souls 2 uh you know a lot of things make it not the best souls game however majula mm -hmm. is a gem i love going back there every time yeah. the first time you get there the music just the lighting ooh no Maj majula is the best hub of any mm -hmm. souls game i will i will die on that hill majula is the best hub you can get the most NPCs there. You can get all of your shops in one place. Yeah, it's just good vibes all around. Yeah. Ooh, yeah. here's a new series, Hubba Hubba, where we just talk about hubs we like. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> Sold. <laughs> hubba Hubba. <laughs> uh, I love it. All right, hold on. I need uh, some pure pyro. With a two euro dono, thank you so much, Pure Pyro. Any stories about getting recognized in public? Um, nothing, nothing. Like everybody who who I've met in public, um, uh, has been uh, very lovely. Uh, you mm -hmm. usually incredibly lovely. Uh, the weird thing lately is I I'm at uh, the my improv comedy club mostly every weekend, 
And, you know, sometimes I'm on stage. Uh, sometimes I do the voice and music work where I'm playing music and I'm, I'm more of a support role. And every once in a while, I, I do what's called hosting, which is kind mm -hmm. of the lowest tier job. You're showing people to their seats. Uh, you're helping the wait staff clean up in between shows. And it's something that all of us kind of take turns doing because it's not the most fun job, but it's still a very sure. necessary job. Yeah. Uh, so there have been a couple times now where, like, I've been like bussing tables, like picking up people's dirty dishes, and people are like, "Oh my God, you're Jack from Red Letter Media," <laughs> and you know, I have like just an armful of dirty dishes. Like, Thanks for watching. I'm kind of busy right now. Clink, clink, clink. <laughs> so not necessarily the the highest status position that I <laughs> want to be seen in, but uh, you know, it's fine. Yeah, my my by and large, my uh, my being recognized has been uh, wonderfully positive. Mm -hmm. Usually just very nice people who just want to say hi and that they appreciate the, 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 the things I've made, which is always nice. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, it is... no one's ever tried to stab me, which is great. <laughs> no. Made it. Made it this far without trying to be. Knock no on one's tried wood. to stab me. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no one's ever tried to stab me. Uh, several. I'm trying, to, I'm trying to think of any... I, I don't know. Every, every, so far, I mean, the one weird thing is the one person, uh, like I was at Universal Studios, and one person, uh, you know, want, it was saying how much they enjoyed uh, the things that I made, uh, was telling me a very lovely story about how, like, oh, the, uh, like watching Best of the Worst uh, is one of the very few things that I do with my dad. Mm -hmm. And so it's like we look forward to every video because it's like one of the few things that we can do together. I love the humor. He loves the old movies. We get to really bond over that. Uh, he's telling yeah. me the story while we are both peeing at a urinal, by the way. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it was a really nice story right up until that point. And then my hands literally on my penis. So. Yeah. And then it's like, <laughs> like, can I take a picture? And it's like, we, we cannot take a picture in the bathroom. That is the mm. one rule. Um, that is like illegal. I think it's probably I think Dr. Disrespect got in trouble for that. <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah like uh and i i understand it where it's like oh i want to tell this i want to tell this story you know because like it's a meaningful thing and i don't want to waste the the time opportunity oh i have the opportunity here but also we're peeing you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah all right so here is uh let's see G here giving it the old college try here's the old college try so we have to be like right here ish. And then if you see oh oh wait, I need my bow. I need my bow. Need my bow. Hey y'all, I need my bow. Alright, here's my I got a short bow. Great. Great short bow. And then Oh, Nini says, Jack, you might not know this, but I was a Souls tuber who made such hits as Best Dark Souls Rocks Part Two. Oh. Those are my before times. Oh, I've seen those videos, Indy. I've never seen Best Dark Souls Rocks Part Two. Was there a Part One, or did you just start at Two? Uh, that's not how I found you. I, I want to say I found you uh, doing uh, like a Metroidvania series, but I, yeah, I, I I looked back, and yeah, a lot of videos just taking the, taking the piss out of like Best of uh, and list listicles, which I think is hilarious. Beautiful. Okay, so we. Yeah. If I understand this cheese right, you stand right here, and you count one, two, three, and you get the reticle right here on three. Oh wait, hold on, I don't have my, I don't have my bombs, my ba bombs. My bombs. Oh, actually, oh, I do have bombs. I do have ba bombs, but uh, I want a dung. <laughs> I wanted that dung, y'all. Oh no, dung, but I must scream. Dung pie. Okay, here's my dung pie pile. Okay, so we go here, and then it said take a step to the right. So you're right here, and then you throw your bombs, right? That's that's theoretically all you do. How many dung pies does it take to kill the Capra Demon? Was that a... Like, uh, how many licks does it take to get to the center of a Tootsie Roll Pop thing? Probably. Let's see here. We're going to see. 
Uh, he knows my lore. Oh, I know. <laughs> I uh, I have a, a, a pillar of ADHD that's called hyper focus, <laughs> which means that when I get into something, I get into something. <laughs> my uh, uh, while we wait to see if the Capra Demon gets poisoned, I don't think I did enough to poison him. I recently got my uh, I, I use YouTube music to listen to music. Mm -hmm. um, uh, speaking of Indie Mouse and Sleep Token. Uh, YouTube Music gives you a uh, uh, a kind of your stats at the end of the year, like most uh, music players do. Mm -hmm. uh, my stat for how much I listen to Sleep Token, by the way. So they give you a, like a percentage, like, oh, you are sure. in the top 50% of people who listen to yeah, No yeah. Doubt or whatever, right? <laughs> uh, I am in the top 0.1% of Sleep Token listeners. Oh no! <laughs> because like literally, all I did was like repeated their their three albums yeah. over and over and over. Which means I have listened to more Sleep Token on YouTube Music than ninety nine point nine percent of Sleep Token listeners. Because I I wonder if you would break that down if you would be in the point like oh oh one. <laughs> you know, like how right? how high in that point one, dude. Yes, take me back uh, to Eden cool. is a goddamn masterpiece. All right, hold on, I gotta look up this cheese video again to see exactly where they are. Howdy, y'all! Back here with my cheese. I found I found out like a cheese video, and he's got a slight southern accent, and it makes me very, very happy. Do is go back to this little corner right here. Yeah, go back. And to once this you get positioned in the right corner, here. pull out any uh, bow and arrow that you have. It doesn't matter which one. Doesn't even matter if you have these. The only uh, the only thing and in my Spotify thing that I was in the top aim going on. percent of you was um, aim for the. There's a, I listen to here a lot of sports pillars, podcasts, so especially from the, hole, the Ringer. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and there's one, the Bill Simmons aim podcast. Aim at hole there. Famous and then sports podcast. Aimed, but I don't listen to them. They have just become the, the right. thing and I sleep to. And there's the something right. about his voice. He doesn't even have, he just has a, like a real mass hole, like Boston accent kind of thing. Mm -hmm. But it's just what I've been falling asleep to for <laughs> ever. Yeah. And so I just have his podcast on repeat as I sleep and I don't listen to them. I don't I don't absorb them or anything. Yeah. But they're on for, you know, 5 to 8 hours a night. So, there you go. So there you go. Yeah. Dunk pie. Dunk pie. Uh, Lars Morona links are not postable in Dunk chats. pie. No. Dunk pie. Donkey. Dunk pies. All right. I got toxic. So we'll see if it's enough for him to get toxic. You're toxic. Uh, I mean, how do we even know if he's gonna get toxic? He doesn't even have a health. Is it just you got to go on like a wing and a prayer? I I guess I have no idea. Like that's the thing. I this uh, the guides that I've been finding are with bombs, and so I am assuming I can toxic. I want to say I saw someone's video. Someone did like a poison only challenge run and did this trick, and I thought it was really neat. So mm. I'm I'm just trying it. That is it is very neat. Um, it might not work. Chris Lucas says, was getting poisoned a part of the plan? Yeah, like that's that's part of the deal is I when you throw dung pies, you also get poisoned. But I did buy some purple moss clumps. Lars Morona says you can poison, but the aim is different. The aim is different. Shit. Yeah, like I maybe you were aiming like maybe that was like the firebomb aim, which is different than the Oh no, that's fair. Alright, hold on. I gotta get rid of my poison here, because I do have some bombs. I brought some bombs along. I've never done this cheese, and so I just want to. This is my, like, can I do this cheese? All right, so we aim for this one. Okay, and then we take one step to the right. And yeah, IG, we... IGN has a video as well on how to poison. I got really worried when uh, Lars Morona said IGN has a video, and I was like, I didn't make that, did I? Oh, did you? <laughs> it's like, no, I didn't. No, no, no. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I did make some of the Dark Souls things. Sure. Uh, and Tyler, uh, Hartree Fokker with a $5 dono. Thank you so much, Hartree. Uh, I appreciate the girthy stream to keep me company during a boring work from home day. You know what? That's what we're here for. That is. Oh, oh, see, he's already at. Now he only has 97 health left. But I'm all That's out of good. bombs. I'm all out of bombs. <laughs> All right, hold on. I can. I gotta. I gotta go. I gotta go. Stock up. Stocking time. Uh, and Snake of the Garden two euro. Don't know. Thank you so much, Jack. Season four of Adventures Nine needs Britney references. Uh there's uh, there's a lot of things it needs. There's a lot of things I want to do, 
uh, in Season 4. There's a lot of things I'm very excited to do in Season 4. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what I will do. My, my list of names has grown. Uh, my list of goofy names. Uh, we ended up, I ended up using a lot of names uh, in the later half of Season 3, so names that you have not seen. Ooh. Uh, spoiler. But, uh, so my, my names have grown. I'm very excited about uh, Season 4. It's, it's a big old we'll see, y'all. All right, I gotta buy some more dung pies. Hold on one moment. I gotta buy more dung pies. Non dung pies. Okay, now hold on. I'm gonna see if I can find a dung pie guide. So, Marty, you gotta fill time. Where's my dung pie? Dung pie, dung pie. So, why, if he has, if he's down to 90 health, he's, you can leave and come back and he's still at 90 health? Well, because I like I'm not going to go to a bonfire or anything. I just went oh, to a shop. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um. Okay, Capra Demon, Dung Pie. Oh God, the search results. No, no, no. <laughs> so much fan Marty, art. You you found an IGN guide about going into the Capra Demon with Dung Pies. Oh, this wasn't doing it from the outside. This is the cheese. Can you still? Oh, here we go. Can you still cheese the Capra Demon with a dung pie? All right, dung. What a what a what a question! Truly a question. Oh my God! Yeah, the aim for this is very different, is what I'm seeing. All right, hold on. But he's only got 97 health left. Uh So I gotta see where this person ends up. Okay, this person, other side of the bridge. Oh, they go a little further back. Okay. I go a little further back. And they go there. Oh, no. uh, and Disky says, really fun show, guys. Wasn't aware of it until Second Wind. Uh, wasn't aware of it until Second Wind, but it's great, and I'm hooked. Thank you so much. And yes, there are some questions about our side quests still planned. Side quests are still planned. Nothing nothing to announce regarding that. Yeah. But the, yeah. Qu the quests will have sides. Don't yeah. you worry. I like the side quests. Uh, there's there's a lot of there's a lot of like ideas right now. Mm -hmm. We are we're in a very where it's like well we kind of can do whatever we want, which is phenomenal. The 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 question is what do we do, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, you know we what we want to do is we want to come back strong with season four. So like that the the plan right now is like oh after season three finishes up we're gonna come the the next thing you see will be season four because you know high highest production value kind of thing right yeah we wanna we wanna keep that strong train running I have most of the side quest three planned out and maps made and everything because we just uh, you know we were on the precipice of filming that mm -hmm. uh, before things happened hold on there might be. Did I kill these people? No, they're still in there. Uh, so, oh, fuck you. Fuck you, ninja lady. If you mess up, if I die here, I'm going to be so upset. I don't want to die here. There we go. Okay, great. I didn't. Uh, I didn't die here. So Christmas yeah, miracle. there are side quests planned. Um, you know, one of the one of the things we were throwing out uh, as as far as like options, even back in the day, was like, what if a side quest used a different rule set? What if we played like a different game, like Monster of the Week or Pathfinder? Yeah, or be interesting. Blades in the Dark, where it's like, if we played a whole different tabletop role playing game in as a side quest, would that be cool? It might be. Yeah. These are the these are the weird things that we have been kind of mulling over as we discuss this. Yeah. This, this person here is taking a long time to get their aim right in this video I'm watching as far as like where the best dunging, where the dunging takes place. The best dunging. And they threw 3 dungs and it seemed to How work. many dungs? Too many dunks. Too many dunks. All right, Too here we go. Too many dunks. <laughs> uh oh, Marty, best persona, persona four, persona five, waifu. Whoa, important stuff. This is important uh, stuff. 
it's uh my thing is i'm kind of basic when it comes to that i'm not proud of it uh Rise is my favorite in persona 4 and she's just like the hot idol girl who like fawns all over you and then uh in in persona 5 uh i if we're counting royal i like uh kasumi the new character added to royal um but in my main playthrough, it was either An or Makoto, which again, real, real, real basic. I want to be less basic when what? Persona Six comes out, or when uh, uh, Metaphor Refantasio comes out later in 2024. My goal is to be less basic with with my love. What ma- I guess, what makes the waifus basic? Um, it's like the almost the like least path of resistance. It's almost like one that like the story just kind of dumps on your lap. Sure, like in Persona okay. Five, like almost everyone's first waifu is this character on. It's because she's like the first female party member you get. Uh, you're most likely gonna rank up your social link with her pretty quickly. Like she's just like her whole thing is she's like a hot model. Like it's not, um, you know, it's like it's like easy easy mode waifus. Easy mode waifus. That's and I think that's fair. Like uh, and I. I don't have a problem with with easy mode waifus in in uh, uh, Moonstone Island. Uh, mm-hmm. My preferred waifu was the one that very uh, aggressively hit on me, and so I was like, "Oh yeah. yeah, this just makes sense. I like this. Yeah. I'm good with this." So, <laughs> no, and I'm not. Wait, I'm not. This isn't me shaming any. Of those are literally my choices. I'm just saying, like. I wish I like when when people like ask me what my favorite games of the year are, are. A lot of times, I'm able to name things that are a little off the beaten path. So yeah. I like being able to say like, while well, Breath or Tears of the Kingdom is probably my number one game of the year, I also recommend a Highland Song or Chance of Zena or Cocoon, that kind of thing. But when you ask me who my waifus are, I'm just like the greatest game ever made is Madden and FIFA. <laughs> like I waifu the Madden and FIFA of the Persona world. <laughs> Oh, I poisoned the dogs, I think. Who I... poisoned the dogs? You. You. I you, poisoned you, you. something. Oh, actually, okay. So I poi- I did poison the dog. Or a dog, at least. Um, yeah, it's, it's that was good. So that's good. That will make this fight significantly easier. It's always a plus. Oh, Jean Lord, uh, 50 bits, thank you so much. To sate curiosity and give you an opportunity to tease, will season four be the hunt for the Oceanic Celestial, the magic item hoarder, or will it be something else? You probably can't say. I can't say. We, I mean, we tease it at the end of season three. I guess, like, something I think we have talked about in general is so far with the three seasons, every season has been not, you know, not focused on, but kind of revolving around one of the players personal uh or yeah per- personal side of their life you know season one was very kind of celestial uh sigmar focused season two was very grinderbin focused season three uh as you know from the couple episodes that you or for the few episodes that you've seen is a little mortimer focused and so i think something i can say without spoiling anything is that season four will uh will be dabarella focused there you go makes sense uh, all right, we're just gonna go. We're just gonna finish this fight. I'm not able to cheese. Finish the fight. Already, I'm trapped. We got one dog down, so that's good. That's Crapper helpful. Demon. And the Capra Demon is mostly down. Oh my god, I'm gonna die. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Snake says a Dabarella prequel in a cooking school. Oh my god, <laughs> could you imagine? Die already. Die already. There we go. Okay. So, yeah, that's what, what I can say without spoiling too much is that, like, the plan is to have it Dabarella focused. Mm-hmm. You know, where it goes from there, that's up to the players. Like, I, yeah. I can only plan so much. Okay, Capra Demon dead. What a, te- what a terrible boss area. What a what terrible is, what, is awful. what awful. Why, just, why, why are we fighting this dude in the studio apartment? Right, just the worst. And then you add the two dogs to it, which just yeah. just adds to the frustration. So the I'm going to call my cheese successful still because uh, we did get the Capra Demon down to just 97 health left. 
Yeah, that was good. And I poisoned one of the dogs, which means that, uh, you know, we had one less dog to deal with. So I'm still going to call it a win, (laughs) a cheese win. (laughs) That was first try, right? Yeah, yeah, first try. Yeah. First try, camper demon. So uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna count that as a win. That's what I'm gonna yeah. say. I'm gonna count that as a cheese win, specifically a cheese win. Cheese whiz. Cheese whiz. So uh, yeah. keeper days, hundred bits. Good cheese. Good cheese. Gouda cheese. Yeah. Gouda. Oh, that cheese was gouda. Cheese is great. You know, uh, my favorite thing about playing the Dark Souls is all the characters are shredded. <laughs> oh, oh, little cheese joke. <laughs> cheese joke. Uh, uh, so yeah, like we can't. Uh, I don't want to give too much away. What uh, ooh, what true. about Adventures Nigh? Uh, mostly because we kind of set it up at the end of season three, so you have to wait till season mm-hmm. three. Um, I'm trying to even think if I want to hint at anything, and th- the answer is no. I don't want to hint at anything. You will find out when there you go when it happens. Uh, SES Guru with a five euro dono. Thank you so much. You need a Gordon Ramsay type culinary teacher for Dabarella. Maybe a bipedal donkey. A bipedal donkey? Incredible. You know, the thing about Dabarella as a chef, though. Oh, because these fuckers followed me? That's why I can't go to the fire? The thing about Dabra as a chef, though, is like she's always wanted to be a chef, but she got most of her training after the adventure started. Sure, yeah. Like she wasn't. Yeah, she didn't enter the party. She entered the party as like a, 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 you know, that's what she wanted to be. That was her dream. It's not like she'd spent a decade in culinary school. Right. She wasn't working at the bear. So, so we can't have a prequel in which gives that gives her too much uh, cooking training. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's it. Okay. Great. Uh, great. Okay, what do we want to do next? Oh, we got to do uh, we got to do Quay lag. Quay lag. Uh, a little horned up spider woman. Got to do the horned up spider woman. You know, do we do? Do we do uh, the uh, the gaping dragon? Maybe. I don't like it when you say it that way. <laughs> Nobody does. Nobody uh, does yet. I keep snakes. saying it. Snake says, uh, is the stream chugging for anyone else? Hello? Chat? Let's see here. Um, oh, it, no, it might be chugging. I'm, I'm seeing some uh, some red bars on OBS for some reason. Oobs. Oh, Oobs yeah. Bars. Oobs is going way down. It was We were in the greens for a Oobs. long time. Oobs is way down. Oobs. How could you? Spectrum Internet. I don't know if you have Spectrum, but I have Spectrum, and I'm not a fan of them. So, oh, hold on. We're getting back to the yellow now. We are. We're getting okay. to a good place. We we ha- we did have a momentary dip in quality. And okay. It, you know. So yeah, that wasn't just you. That was a momentary dip in quality. Yeah. Chugging them softly. Chugging them softly. <laughs> uh, Cry. Been a member for one month. Thank you so much, Cry. I hope we see Susan again. Ghost emoji. The spookiest Susan. emoji of them all. And like actually, like Susan was one of the was one of the side quest ideas uh, that I was tossing around as far as other systems are concerned, because you know Susan's goal is to get back to her home in the East Mountains, which <laughs> is a realm that we have not yet explored. So like, if we go to the East Mountains, perhaps they don't use Fifth Edition Dungeons and Dragons in the East Mountains, right? Uh-huh. <laughs> like. And so everyone needs to roll a character in Pathfinder or in a different system because that's what they play in the East Mountains. Or, you know, that's how their world works over there. There you go. Which could be a, a fun way to do it. Fucking, fucking guy. Fucking guy. Fucking guys. And Cry with another $2. Thank you so much, Cry. Anus performing at their club. Yes, please. You know your club has has hit the big time when you got Anus performing at it. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I uh, like I'm not gonna go there just because I uh, know I have to do her voice. So, <laughs> <laughs> and her voice is relatively difficult to do for extended periods. Yeah. So 
in episode two uh-huh. when they meet up with Anus again. I know uh, Mortimer is like, you should come to our club. And I was like, maybe not. Maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> and I was doing that your for, own grave there. for very selfish reasons. Huh? Uh, and Lampy, uh, sorry, I missed your bits earlier, uh, with 100 bits uh, over in Twitch. Jack for Adventures Nigh Season 4, Part 1, Tour 2. Will you finally have Marty dressed up as Tree 172 from Season 2 in the background for the whole filming as a reference for the fans? Of what? <laughs> I think that was a, it was a, well the first part was an anime joke and then the second part it just made it sound like I was going to have to dress up as a tree for a long time. Yeah. So no. No. I will I'm going to I'm probably going to go to the filming for a little bit. Not like to the filming but like I'll probably I'll probably take a day or two and head out there to hang out with you guys oh, but um I'm, I'm definitely not going to be there for um, for the entirety cuz you know what they say about too many cooks? Too many cooks. <laughs> they, say, they say too many cooks. That's right. Is that too many cooks? Uh, Have you ever done D and D with uh, actual, um, like, like models and like building building environments and stuff? <laughs> Not models like supermodels. Models like you know, like when you see some like people are like really into it, like miniatures. And stuff uh, like I that. have, I have done it with actual miniatures, uh, and it can be, it can be very fun. Um, mm-hmm. uh, as a player, a friend of mine. Uh, had a, a mini a little mini campaign that i was involved in and they use uh miniatures exclusively where they would you oh, know wow. set up and you know like th- they had like some basic like rocks and bricks and they would set them up in certain ways to be like okay this is a hallway now and you know this is what you can see now uh which i thought was lovely uh for uh-huh. the game that i run uh for a bunch of kids there's a game that i run with uh one of my kids and uh, some friends kids uh, we use uh, little miniatures and a grid uh, just because it's easy. Uh, it's easier for them to kind of lock on to that mm-hmm. for, for some reason. And then they get to like make their own characters like with Lego uh, with Lego guys. And they really like that. So that's really yeah. cool. I like that. No. And I, I really, Oh, oh you weren't even, did you? Did everybody see that? It was like two feet away from me. It was like two feet away from me. Uh, so yeah, no, I and I, I really like miniatures. I think the. Oh my god! I can't believe I'm not dead. Oh, you're, you're getting gooed by a bunch of goo boys. I was getting gooed by a bunch of goo boys, and I didn't realize I was on a sliver of health. Incredible. Goo so, boys. There's flame boys. There's all sorts of boys. Yeah, there's goo boys. So I think you know miniatures uh, are really nice. Uh, they're it's really fun. It's very tactile. Uh, they, it is limiting, you know, in the amount of things that you can put in your scene. And then for some people, like I know Casey talks about his imagine his imagination uh, deficit, where you know if you say, okay, oh, this is a hallway, and uh, you know this little thing which uh, looks like uh, a brick is actually a bouquet of flowers, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, and they go, okay, yeah, and and. I think it's easy for people to forget that that's a bouquet of flowers. Sure, yeah. So that's right. Uh, theoretically, Nick, uh, we are still going. Yeah, we. Uh, uh, Jack doesn't know how to turn the stream off. Yeah, so and we're so just going to figure streaming. that off. Yeah. yeah. I hope that's okay, that we're just going to keep streaming. Yeah. So far, people seem to be cool with it. But, uh, yeah, so I have played with miniatures. I know you have played a, a small amount of D&D. Do you play with miniatures as well? No, I've never. I, the only uh, uh, campaign I've, I've played was during COVID, and we played uh, using Roll20 and... Um, Roll20 and... Jesus, I forgot what the name of the other thing was. <laughs> D&D Beyond? Is oh, yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a thing. Yeah. I remember having two things open. One was, like, the map, and one was, I think, all the character information. Yes, these are things. Oh, yeah, you. but I'm a big fan of like miniatures. Like my my, it was around the holidays. My dad like had a bunch of just like a giant uh, Christmas village set that he would put up. So I just I like miniatures, like a, a, of like a little train sets and yes. stuff. Like I think I think the tangibility of them are really cool. Hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, and you know, like they they can do a lot of really neat things as far as like you know, for example, I think. Um, if we're going to talk about like practical downsides to a system like Foundry, which is a system I love and still use all the time, 
uh, is it's really hard to show height because it's from a top down yeah. perspective, right? Yeah, yeah. Whereas if you have miniatures, you can actually buy little stands to show that they are 10 feet in the air. And if you have a character that flies, knowing what height they are at is really, really important. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I love that. So, yes. I also love that. Does this open uh, on this side? Does not Gray open. Jester, thank you so much for the prime sub over on Twitch. We're now at 40 subs. I feel like we were at like 20 at the beginning of the stream. We've doubled it. Nick? We doubled it. Raise times here. I know we're not getting paid, but just double or nothing right now. <laughs> we uh, just doubled or nothing. Incredible. Uh, Nick said, I just swept my dad at pool and I sent him home crying. Truly, the Christmas spirit is alive in the Calandra household. <laughs> at first, I read, I just swept my dad's pool. I just swept my dad's what? pool. It's winter, Nick. Like, it, it is, is fine. It is December. That. You should not be yeah. doing that. Very modest December, let me say, though. Oh, like yesterday yeah. was like 50 degrees and rainy. I was like, this is a weird Christmas. Oh, an incredibly weird Christmas. Yeah. Oh, I remember how to get through the sewers. It's been a while since I've been here. Tell you what. Been a while. This is, these aren't where the uh, basilisks are. are they? Yes, these are where the basilisks are. Those dudes are some real some bitches. <laughs> uh, Lampy with 100 bits says, you be nice to Kalan Dad, Nick. Wait, Maybe what? just give us a dollar to say be nice to your own father, Nick. <laughs> oh, okay. I get it. I thought he was referring to Nick as our Kalan dad. Oh, no. And I Kalan don't think dad that's is, necessarily, is father. you know. No. <laughs> no offense, Nick. I don't know. I just don't uh, think that's true. No, there's only, there's only one second win, Daddy. <laughs> I'm not going to say who it is, though. It's Omar. It's, a... <laughs> it's Omar. Spoilers. Oh, spoilers, it's Omar. He does so much for us. He does so much. Uh, so Stick of the Garden says, Marty, have you cooled on your amiibo addiction or are you still going? Uh, I've mostly cooled. Uh, however, I just bought three more. <laughs> Wait a minute. But those were uh, pre orders of upcoming ones of characters I genuinely love. Uh, and it was uh, Banjo mm -hmm. of Banjo. No, was it Banjo? It was Joker, Banjo, and. Joker, Banjo, and Sora? I think those were the three I just bought. Sora from Kingdom Hearts. Yeah, so what I'm hearing is no, you have not cooled on your amiibo addiction. <laughs> I mean, up until the only ones I'd bought, well, no, and then I got a couple tiers of the Kingdom ones. <laughs> <laughs> but uh -huh. on a big chart of how how crazy I was yeah. with buying them, I'm not as crazy as I was before. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. At this point, like a lot of the ones I don't have are characters I don't care about. And so unless I find a crazy good deal on them, I'm not gonna. Um, I'm not gonna buy them. Suspicious. Yeah. I am suspicious of this. This sounds They're a great. lot. This sounds a lot like a cry for help. It's not a cry for help. I can I can stop anytime I want. Mm -hmm. I don't have Ness. I want Ness from Earthbound because I, I really like Ness. Yes. I want Ness. I have I have a few amiibos. I have a, a couple amiibos. Not. Not a, a large amount of amiibos. Mm. Did you buy just like specific characters you liked or just kind of? Yeah, I think I got like a Samus. Yeah. Oh my god, these fucking rats. These fucking rats. Yeah, Lampy with 100 bits, that is true. Uh, when I go to Japan, I will come back with a suitcase full of amiibo because <laughs> amiibo are crazy cheap in <laughs> Japan. And I obviously do not care about actually using them in any games or anything. So, right. um, yeah. Right. AC I... says, I just have two. I bet one's Mega Man. Mega Man and Ryu? Are those your two? Ooh. Mega Man and Ryu? Johnny Hadouken himself? Johnny uh, and, Hadouken. Yeah, that was his original name. I don't wow. know if you knew that. I Ken Masters that. and Johnny Hadouken. Uh, John Rayasha, thank you so much for the Prime sub over in Twitch. Nick says, by the way, next merch drop is January 3rd. Remember, remember the 3rd of January. Is that true, Nick? Has everybody approved the merchandise? I don't know. That's what Nick said. That's yeah. what Nick said. Has, has everyone, including Jack, approved the merchandise? I'm going to be honest. I don't know the answer to that question, uh, but judging from context clues, uh -huh. I bet everyone has. I bet everyone has. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. No. Oh, no, no. Did I misread the context clues? <laughs> 
You know. Oh my fucking god. And I might have. I, you know what? I might have. That's uh, may, uh, I could be not. Maybe I'm not thinking of the correct things. But I'm. So I might have uh, approved things. But I, I, I. I'll be honest with you. I. I kind of forget. It's been, <laughs> it's been a month, y'all. Been a month. It's been a month. Uh, George Lucas, hundred bits. I'm curious about this. Does Jack? Do Jack's kids care about Marvel and Star Wars? Not even a little bit. No. <laughs> <laughs> not even not even a small amount not like no mcu nothing nothing we uh like we've seen them all like you know i i love taking them to movies uh so we've we've seen them all we uh during during kind of the luckier downier portion of the pandemic mm -hmm. we actually watched them all again it was a you know lovely thing to fill uh, to fill the time uh and they just do not care they just do not care about any of it um which is fine you know uh and you know i've shown them the star wars and again they could give less than two shits which to me is is perfectly fine because like uh, you know i'm at the point of star wars where uh, there's more that i don't like than i do like mm. uh they're into their own thing. yeah there we go finally kill that fucking channeler He's oh. being real, being real, being real shitty. He's being a his real shithead. Big old, his big old Aquaman in the Lost Kingdom oh, promotion of Trident. God, this is the worst. <laughs> this is the worst. This is the worst. This is the worst area. Everything is terrible, and now I'm Rat zone. Uh, Nick says there's only one adventure is nigh design right now that you did approve of. So yes. Oh, okay, great. Great. Then I'm gonna believe you because <laughs> I have no other choice. So. <laughs> Uh, and keep it ace, 100 bits. Thank you so much. Are we getting hoodies? I need a new hoodie. I would like hoodies. I'm a big hoodie fan. I would like hoodies, yeah. Hoodie gang, rise up. Hoodie gang. Oh, that's right. Where? Where? Oh, God. God damn it. Where am I? What am I doing? Where am I and what am I doing? Where am I and how did I get here? Wait, how did I get back here? Da oh, damn it! I'm a I'm legitimately lost now. <laughs> it's great. And no, it's fine. It's fine. These uh, these sewers are very easy to read. There's no way you'll get lost. Oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, no, it's it's gonna be fine. So, new merch drop January third. Uh, apparently, I have approved these uh, designs, which is very great, including an Adventure is Nigh merch drop. Which uh, we can only believe, Nick. Nick would never lie. Nick would never lie. Oh one God. Nick only lies, and one Nick only tells the truth. <laughs> Die, you fucking slime thing. Slimos. Oh my fucking God, would you die already? I hate this area, and I'm going to die. Uh, tsunami do shirt with a twenty dollar dono. What? Oh, Blob, thank you so much, Tsunami do shirt. I got pseudo regalia and ex zodiac for Christmas. Ooh. Have you guys played either of those? Ex zodiac is like uh, Sega AM2 made a Star Fox and made a Star Fox game, and pseudo regalia is a fantastic platformer, goat thighs and parkour. Uh, I have and I've, I've played and completed pseudo regalia. I'm a big fan of it. Oh. I've not played ex zodiac though. Okay. Uh, I've seen the film Zodiac, David Fincher's Zodiac. Do you think that counts? Uh, 100%. That 100% yeah. counts. Oh, wow. Yeah, X, X Zodiac really does look like Star Fox. Oh. Well, there you go. Yeah. Well, there you go, y'all. Yo. Do it. I love those Star Foxes. Play a Star Fox. All right. I'm getting out of the sewers uh, because I hate it in there. Sewers are bad. Sewers are bad. Sewers I are bad. think... And this is something I should have done uh, earlier, which is I go through the muck water. Oh no, oh, f oh no, oh god. Oh god, I'm trapped, I, tra I can't move, I'm trapped. Oh fuck, everything's fucked, everything's fucked. Everything is fucked. It's fuck. Everything is fucky. Everything is so fucky and I fucked. 
What's uh, the muck water? You're trying to go through the muck water? What is that? Only... There's there's a, a small, like, if you want to call it a shortcut through the depths, uh, if you go behind the butcher, mm. one of the butcher's areas leads you directly to the large rat. Oh, yeah, I like that big rat. And if you get to the large rat, there is a way to slide down the the water slide in such a way that you get to the gaping dragon. And I was thinking to myself, I just don't want to go through that muck water. I bet I can find sure. my way through the sewers pretty fast. And as it turns yeah. out, I could not. So now I got to go through the other muck water, which is filled with dogs, which is, you know, worse. Ah, always, it's always the fucking dogs. Right. So now I think I'll be able to roll my way out of here. Here we go. Here's the butch. Oh, fuck. Fuck, fuck those dogs. Fuck those dogs. Fuck those dogs. Not like... No, not like actually. actually. No, no. And then I forgot that the embers over here that you gotta get. Oh, everything's terrible, y'all. We're not gonna <laughs> go for too much longer. Maybe another like 20-ish minutes. What do you feel about that? Sounds line? great. Sounds great. Great. We're gonna go for another 20-ish minutes, y'all. Wunderbar. I want to beat uh, the gaping dragon. Maybe we can get a. Maybe we can get to to quail egg. Sounds wonderful. Sounds wonderful. And uh, yeah. So uh, in terms of other second wind streams uh, over the holiday break, the only one we have planned now is uh, Thursday evening, six p.m. Central. Jesse is oh. going to be hosting a Dead by Daylight stream with, uh, as of right now, Jess, uh, Will, and Elise. Mm. We're all DBD fans. They love the Dibida. So we can, uh, they, can, they can rank their favorite spookies in that game. They got Chucky, mm. Pyramid Head, and others. And, uh, wait, you can be Chucky in DVD? They just, in, they just put Chucky in. And I have to imagine he's almost like Odd Job in Goldeneye. Where it's yes. Like he's, too, he's too small. He's I too small. I can't imagine that would work, but you know, you got to trust. Yeah. Trust the devs. You got to trust the, trust the process. Right. Okay. Here we go. I got the large ember. I got through the zone. Here's the big rat. I don't need to kill the big rat, but it's a pretty easy kill. So should we? I mean, it'd be rude of us not to. Is the spider shield good? Is um, that a good shield? Is that like a parry shield? It's a, I believe it's a parry shield, and it's a pretty, it's a solid shield. It's not like the best shield, but it is a solid shield. I also think it's a starting class shield. Uh, if you start mm. as like the warrior or the the barbarian or whatever. Ah, uh, gotcha. Is, so. It's weird that they kind of hide it here because it's not yeah. that great of a shield. But after this fight, if you go to the left side of this waterfall, by the way, you can slide all the way down. You don't oh, gotta do that's any of that bullshit. Fact. That's, that's absolutely a fun fact. Yeah. Then you go up here, you get the shortcut. Here's the shortcut. Boom, boom. Now we got the shortcut. Now we can go fight a gapers. Ew, oh, never mind, never mind. Don't. old gapers. Didn't like that, didn't like gapers. Fight the gapers. Fight the gapers, y'all. Oh, oh, apparently the spider shield is good at anti-toxic in Blight Town. Oh, okay. There you go. Uh, Billy Wilbo with a great question. When is the HBD DBD stream? We gotta HB wait till the 10th anniversary. HBD DBD. DBD stream. HBD DBD. HBD DBD. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Gundam. Gundam. Gundam? Gund is I that what you robot. said? Oh, no, I said Dundum. Like, Dundum. You, done you got oh. done. Absolutely Dundum. I thought you said I thought you said Gundam, which is, uh, to be fair, something you absolutely would say. Oh, man, I like those I like those robots because they got little dudes inside of them. Do you think it's just a robot? No, there's a little dude inside. There's a little dude inside. Pulling all the levers. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Classic little dude. Yeah. Classic HBD little dude. HBD little dudes. Ay ay ay. Ay ay ay. Ay ay ay. Alpha five. 
who is not Brian Cranston. No, uh, Zordon was Brian Cranston. Alpha Five was Bill Hader. Uh, Brian Cranston's one of his first jobs in Hollywood was uh, uh, one of the people in many of the puppets in the TV show of uh, of Power Rangers. Oh, and then he went on to play Zordon in the movie. That's why he played Zordon in the movie, because of his history. Oh, that's incredible. And so, like, you know, obviously, like, a a lot of the footage is from the old uh, Super Super Sentai TV show. Mm -hmm. Uh, But whenever the monster needed to interact with the uh, American characters, you know, they would just hire nobody stunt actors. And Brian Cranston was one of those actors who would don, like, the big ridiculous outfit and, you know taunt the teenagers i love it that is excellent okay here we are the gapers the one the only bad gapers what an intro god i love this this crawling up he's just a big old big old vagina mouth he's a big old dude great great boss like the 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 most fun thing about it is of course like the fact that it's a completely optional boss. Mm-hmm. He's also if you're if you're going through sort of the normal uh, the, the the normal route the normal order, it's kind of the first of its kind of a thing that is just real fucking big. Yeah. Yes. It's very like monstrous. Real big guy. Yeah. yeah. It also is uh, good because it's also I think in the grand scheme of Souls boss, it's not not too difficult. Uh, I think you know a lot of folks are able to get get through it on uh, one or a few attempts. Oh, absolutely! Uh, but you feel good because you're like, oh my god, I could take this thing down. If I could take this thing down, I could take anything down. Uh, nine five. Thank you so much for the sub over on Twitch. I like that. Just keep saying how many subs. Forty forty two. It was great. 42, 42 subs on yeah, Twitch. I nice. think that's relatively new that we got the the option for people to sub on Twitch, right? Yeah, I think just when Nick was waiting for the bank account stuff to be set up uh, before he set it up. So I think that is, you know, that stuff didn't get set up till right before the holiday. So. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, because I think the first stream that had it was um, the last stream, the one that Nick did with uh, Chivalry, with oh. uh, Jeff and Casey. Because I remember people were, I, I was also streaming at the same time, and people went over there really quickly to try to get founders. Or is that what it's called? Founders? Or like um, the first X amount of people who subscribe to a channel get a badge. Oh. Like that is, oh, you were here at the start. You were here. Clampy has a first, a founder. Oh, oh, speaking of Lampy with 100 bits, says, when will you be personally thanking all 10 founder members on Twitch? Uh, I'm not. I'm putting you on a, on a list because if you were a founder, that means you weren't paying attention to, to me streaming Christmas games at the oh. same time, which is incredibly rude. All right. By the way, in all of my soulsing, I have I've never, never seen... I, I, I have I never been you. grabbed by the gaping dragon and been eaten. That is, I've never seen that either. That is something I have never seen before. I did cut off its tail. Uh, so That's good. I, I got the cool weapon. That's a plus. Um, I don't even know if I can use that weapon yet. It's a pretty badass weapon. The Dragon King Great Axe. Look at this It's thing. crazy how... Everyone in chat is like, oh, yeah, that's new to me, too. Uh, it's new to me. Yeah. Ryan says it's new. Uh, Kubernetes says it's new. Yeah, weird. Amazing. Oh, I need 50 strength to wield the the Dragon King Great Axe, which has no scaling whatsoever, uh, but oh, does an insane st- amount of damage. Yeah. So. Okay. Yeah. I've never seen the grab. I've never been grabbed. How fun that we all get to experience that together Apparently, it's a hollow day miracle it's a hollow day miracle i mean i guess like its tail was cut off uh so it couldn't do its tail swing and i was right up in its biz i was oh way so up maybe it's like a jungle. very specific set of uh yeah. things need to, need to be happening apparently that's great uh summon gray fox thank you so much for the prime sub over on twitch i need to get better at using my prime subs because i'm gonna be honest most of the times i don't 
Yeah. You get if you have Amazon Prime, you get one free sub a month. And yeah. I'm like, I should just at least like pop into like I don't know if I can like Casey or Jetsy streams and toss them. Oh toss yeah. Them a little sub. Then that's but Bezos. I'm, I'm is money. That. Yeah. You're just yeah. Bezos is Bezos. taking money from Casey. Yeah. Rude. Rude. Incredibly rude. Now here's my question. Oh no, his tail is back. By the way, after you cut off its tail, the tail grows back. It's just like a salamander. I assume if I try to cut it off again, I will not get a second axe. Gaping dragon. Gaping dragon. Love this dragon. Gaping dragon. Gaping, gaping. Because, like, not only is it monstrous, it's horribly monstrous. Yeah, yeah. You think it was ever a regular dragon and then, like, something happened to it and it became gaping? I believe that's the lore implications. Yeah. Someone gaped it? Someone gaped <laughs> Oh, God. Let's not <laughs> say that. That's the worst. Uh, because, like, at this point in the game, if you're playing this game, you have seen dragons. Sure. And they were ungaped. And they were ungaped, yes. Yeah. Degaped, if you will. Degaped. <laughs> Which is another thing or, that I don't want us to say again. Or do dragons like start out gaped and then like get sewn together? Oh, maybe. Fused together? Ew. I think I, I like that less. I think that's worse. To be honest, I don't think I like any of these. Yeah, I don't like any of these. Um, yeah. And that's where we're at right now. Is mm -hmm. I just don't like any of these. Yeah. Hit it with my club. Hit it with my club. Hit it Hit with my map club. Hit the club. There we go. I fucking love the club. Great weapon. <laughs> Big old two-handed fucking Babe Ruthin. Just I'm just here Babe Ruthin. MPH says crouching tiger, gaping dragon. <laughs> <laughs> Kudos. What a, what Kudos, a film. friend. What, what a, a film. Picture. What a film. What was it? Oh, that's on my list. Like with our week off, because you know, we are we are taking a week off this week. Mm -hmm. Obviously, like we're here streaming, we're here goofing, but this is yeah. honestly this is more fun for me than, yeah, yeah. than taking a day off. This is like lowercase w work. Yeah. Yes. That's why we're this is very casual, we're taking breaks, we're we're doing that. But this is a, a week off of work. Uh, I'm gonna watch some movies that have been on my watch list for a while. Ooh. Including um uh From Beijing with Love. Oh which I, is I, I, a I, Stephen I, Chow's like spy comedy. Okay, and is it newer? Like he made that after, uh, obviously Stephen Chow was Kung Fu Hustle. Right? Yeah, oh my God, he grabbed me a fucking gen. What's he? How's he doing this? Am Ooh, I gonna survive? This... Am I gonna survive? That's no. full health. Oh my God, is that, that is an instant kill. That is a inst That is a full kill. Fuck. Uh, I want to say he made it before he made Kung Fu Hustle or Shaolin Soccer. Oh wow. Um. It's a, it's a movie I see pop up every once in a while, just like I see GIFs of the movie or short little scenes yeah. of it. And it looks insanely fun uh, and funny. And I always forget about it as soon as I see the GIF, where I was like, I should write that down. Uh, and I'm going to watch it this week. Uh, and I'm very excited about that. Good Across one to have on the list. off my list. There you go. Uh, first, we have to beat this goddamn gaping dragon, which we are coming... Closer and closer to. Actually, do I have any fucking? I don't have any uh, boosters. Simon says, "says Remember the L1 R1 mash to escape grabs. Could you have escaped those grabs? There's an L1. I did not know that L1 R1 mash was a thing that existed. So I've never Simon been grabbed. Says, Simon wouldn't lie to us. Never been grabbed. Drew Barrymore's never been, been grabbed. Drew Barrymore's never been grabbed. I, I think you have to have been grabbed in order to know." Uh, that hold on. I think this guy sells electric paper. I think I just need, I just need to do more damage. Just, just give me the electric paper. Yeah, this guy sells electric paper. Hold on, I need money. Uh, Disky, oh, oh, thank you so much for the prime sub. I need money. Then I get some electric paper. 
Well, now Simon says less escape, more to speed up the animation. Well, that's not escaping. That's not escaping. We're just dying faster. <laughs> yeah, I don't care about dying faster. <laughs> you guys really excited, and now I was like, oh, no. Uh, it means you take less damage, though. Oh. Oh. Well, then that's good. That's... This is like that Simpsons thing of like, but it's but it's cursed. And you're like, oh, that's bad. Oh, but it comes with free yogurt. That's good. <laughs> oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but the frozen yogurt is cursed. That's bad. We will trade again. All right. Uh, do do do. Okay. I got my I got my electric paper now, so we can do significantly more damage if. to the gapers. The yogurt contains potassium benzenate. That's bad. <laughs> I, <don't know. laughs> uh, I guess we could also get Solaire in here if need be, but. You know what? If you're not good enough to do it by yourself, you're not good enough to be friends with Solaire. Whoa. No. That's, Sol not, true. that's not true. I, I, that's I, literally I that's anti-Solaire. That is true. Solaire says he wants to help. He wants to help and uh, have uh, have jolly cooperation. Solaire. What a good dude. What a, you know, a stand-up quality dude. Oh, Keeper says, looks like uh, From Beijing with Love was actually the first movie that uh, Stephen, Stephen Chow wrote. Yeah, so there you go. Yeah, it looks really great. It looks very fun. You know, obviously it'll be less refined and like, you know, uh, Shaolin Soccer More and legit. Kung Fu yeah. Hustle had like a little like mysticism element to it. Sure. So I don't think like anime come happen. to life. Yeah, a little yeah. anime come to life. But it should be fun. Okay, now you're going to go do your stompy. Go do your stompy. No, oh, you're not going to do your stompy. Uh, Alex Holly with a $5 dono. Thank you so much, Alex. Jack, I'm so happy Adventure is nice. Yours, dream scenario. Marty, I just started Herman's Head rewatch. Never forget. I brought up Herman's Head the other day. Yeah. Yeah. As That's you should. Little, yeah, it wasn't even like a... I don't even, I'm going to be honest. I'm not sure why I brought it up. I was like, <laughs> remember Herman's Head? <laughs> It was it was like supposed to be the next big thing. Yeah, it was just very, very strange for like a primetime sitcom. Again, I don't know what primetime half hour comedy. Yeah, but no, it was like you know, oh, a bunch of Simpsons writers uh, yeah. making another TV show. This is it, y'all. This is the next big thing. And even like even Futurama wasn't necessarily the next big thing. No, and it feels like it kind of like has grown in esteem over time, but yeah. is not kind of in the same, uh, not not uh, remembered with the same reverence as uh, The Simpsons. Right. Yeah. We did it. We gaped. We gaped. We came. We saw. We gaped. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pattern pending. Thank you so much for the prime sub. Alexander, speaking of, is season of four a go? Season four is a go, and all of your incredible donations uh, for the time being are going towards that fund because we need to fly several human beings to a secure location, several of which are international. Well, one of which is international. One of which is international. <laughs> but that's very international. It's several, the whole, a whole, a whole ocean, and a whole country. Yes. Yeah. Um, no, but so we yeah, are very we excited. To have it back, we're very excited to you know c keep keep the story going and uh, have everybody you know in person again. Which, as it turned out, like last last year when we were able to. Oh wait, there's no fire down in Blighttown. I gotta go. I gotta go level up before I get in there. Um, you know, last year when we were all able to get together, it was also just like, oh wait, all of these are real people who I enjoy spending time with. Yeah. It was it was it was it was weird. It was weird. It was like meet, meeting cartoon characters in real life. Which you know, like I know there's a lot of BS around like the whole like virtual workspace versus meet <laughs> space workspace, but like it it is true that every once in a while it is very nice to be in the same physical space as your coworkers. Yeah, absolutely. The meat space. Delicious. The delicious meat space, y'all. Uh, Lampy says Marty's flights will be the most expensive, though. Yeah, only first class for this guy. 
Is that true? Only first class? No. I've only flown first class once, and it was uh, because the person sitting next to me had a dog, uh-huh. and I'm very allergic to dogs, oh. and so I just asked if I could just move anywhere, and they moved me to first class. Oh, hell yeah. Which was great. So I'm going to start just every time someone sits down, I'm going to look at something on them and say I'm allergic to it. Hundred. I mean, no. the gamble's not going to work every time, though, right? No. Because eventually they're going to be like, yeah, you can uh, move. Uh, you can have this seat in the back of the plane that's the closest to the toilet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have a special seat just for the sick kids. We'll yeah. put you in a quarantine bay down below. <laughs> oh. <laughs> to crated pets. You and the crated pets will be yeah. able to sit no, together. No, they're making me sick. <laughs> uh, Casey says, I love Futurama way more than The Simpsons. Wow, bold. It is bold. I, I like I like Futurama. I don't love Futurama. I like it. Yeah. Whereas Simpsons at its height, I love them. Well, it's it's so tough because, like, you know, Simpsons just had that, like, zeitgeist thing where it was all we had. And, uh, oh, fuck, these tables don't break, apparently? Come on, get out of here. Prepare to die. Only in the remaster, maybe. <laughs> maybe. Uh, so, like, Futurama is good. And, uh... Honestly, some jokes from Futurama like hold up significantly better than entire uh, Simpsons episodes, even at the height of Simpsons. Mm-hmm. But it's not the Simpsons. It's not the yeah. Like Simpsons. Mike Mike Anderson says, peak Simpsons were better than Futurama, but Futurama is more consistent. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think Futurama's had the lows that the Simpsons has had, but um, <laughs> well, not the highest. To be fair, though, Futurama has also been canceled. Several times, like, yeah. So I, I, think, I think their lows are they weren't allowed to make more episodes, even <laughs> though they wanted to. So, eh, potato, potato, no. right? The Simpsons uh, probably should have been canceled at some point. Sure. Yeah, and Disky says apparently The Simpsons has gotten better recently. Yeah, I haven't watched any of the new episodes, but I watch uh, a YouTuber I like, Super Eye Patch Wolf, uh, did, a, did a video or two kind of like long essay check-in on the simpsons and how it, like the last season or the last season or two or whatever has actually gotten better and why um which is interesting mm, very interesting all right here we go here we go here we go here we go Casey says we also got canceled kindred spirits oh that's what we should say instead of we got fired from uh we, we didn't get let go we our shows were just canceled <laughs> Well, is there is there a better word for canceled? Because now canceled means something else. Canceled means something else. Yeah, we were not renewed. <laughs> we we don't want to tell people that we were canceled. No. Yeah. Because then they might think we ha- we're we're a bunch of perverts. We're, we're a bunch of we're a bunch of spacies. Yeah. And we uh, we ain't a bunch of spacies. Gilded Ruiz with a two dollar dono. Thank you so much, Gilded. Do you recommend using a guide for your first playthrough? Assuming you're talking about this, in which case, I don't know. My gut says no, but also play the game how you want. Would you recommend a, a Dark Souls newbie use a guide, Jack? What do you mean by guide? Ooh, that's a good. Yeah, like not like a walkthrough, but maybe. Uh, I wonder if there's like a good like things you should know beforehand, like things this game won't tell you, that kind of thing. Right, where it's like, like, yeah, I recommend watching some people play through it, and like, you know, maybe they have a guide for like how to make a strong character. So your first playthrough, you can be a little buffed, mm-hmm. buffed, be a buff boy. Yeah, because there's certain things like uh, if if Jack would have been cursed by the basilisks hmm. back there, um, if you just didn't know the one dude you go to in order to get your curse cured, right. that's just a bad time. You're just having a very bad time. Right. Like if you don't if, if you don't know certain things in this game, you will have a very bad time. And so yeah, well like watch watch some videos, watch some uh, some guides. I guess I guess guides is the best word for what like walkthrough videos are. Yeah. Uh, hold on, I gotta get my kicking animation down. I'm about to do something here. You leave me no choice. I was once grateful. Bye. <laughs> Uh, Lampy with a 100-bit dono. Thank you so much. Just don't use the IGN guides for Dark Souls 1. Can't trust the author of those. Uh-oh. Listen, my words have been been overwritten several times since then. Definitely couldn't trust them back in 2011, though. I would not have trusted those whatsoever. 
Well, and you know, we've uh, we've uh, the community has found new ways to play since then. Oh yeah, we found you know better options. Like, if if you uh, as a player of games in general enjoys magic, um, wait, did I not kill him? Oh my God, look at that! Do is he see? not dead? He is dead. Uh, but but his he, goodies are all the way down there. His goodies are in the void. You, can you guys see that white dot down there? Yeah, those yeah, are his well, goodies. If you rest, will they reappear? I did. I thought I did. Oh my god! Quit and, I, quit and reload, maybe. Quit and re oh yeah, quit and reload. That's what people are saying. I want his ring. Give uh, me your ring. Give me your ring. Uh, so yeah, like you know, watch some watch some videos. Uh, if you if if you like magic, be a magic user because uh, in uh, Dark Souls, magic is uh, w one of the most overpowered things mm -hmm. you will ever run across. Here's how my that's how I that was how I got my through my first playthrough. Here's a uh, here's all, all you have my, a lot of characters. Here's all my save files. This is Steve. This is Gormac Dimple. This is Bam sure. Bam Unga Fibus. <laughs> I feel like Bam Bam and Unga are probably yeah, similar. Pretty similar. It feels like they're going for the same thing. Yeah. I think I was trying to I was trying to uh, come up with some challenge runs uh, that were very Unga Bunga focused. So there we go. There we go. There's the fap ring. Fap fap fap. fap, fap, fap. I'm not gonna. I probably shouldn't be chanting fap. There might be fap. children in the audience. Uh and Mia, thank you so much. Been a member in the Green Gang for a month. Jack, do you like Loot Fisk? I don't know what that is off of the top I'm, of my head. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm doing a Google to see if this is going to be like a Loot Fisk D's nuts. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, it looks like a dish. Dried white fish. Oh, uh, then no. Dried white fish. I don't know. I think it's a Norwegian thing. Okay, I'm sorry, uh, Anmia. I don't know what that is, and I've never had it. I do love fish in general. Yeah. I love eating fish. I love all kinds of fish, so I would probably like it. Oh, it's fermented herring. You're not selling me. No. Is that the thing that's like canned and like people open it and like vomit because it's such a bad smell? Is that a thing? Yeah. Ew. Ew, y'all. What are, what are there's you like to YouTube, or There's like YouTube. Uh, there's like videos where like they try to like they open it in like an enclosed van and like dudes are just like orphans. horking. Yeah, yeah. Dudes are dudes be horking, y'all. Dudes be horking. Uh, no, so I, I probably would not be a fan of that. Though I do like a fish. I like it a fish. I like it a fish in general. I like it a fish. Oh fuck! Uh, I'm a big big fish fan. No one else in my household is a big fish fan, uh, which is very upsetting to me. Oh, shoestrumming. That's what I was thinking of. Loot, I think loot fisk is more edible, whereas that shoestrumming thing is the one that like no one actually likes it. It's mostly for the for the content. People try to eat it. We're, eat we're hey, listen up, boys. We're eating for the content. <laughs> Gotta eat for the vines. Sir, vine was closed down five years ago. Well, then we better eat harder, y'all. <laughs> what about real big fish? Love a real big fish. Back in the way. One of the greatest shows I ever went to uh, as as a la as a lad. Uh, was Real Big Fish opening up for They Might Be Giants in Madison at the Barrymore oh Theater. Oh, my God. The Barrymore. Oh, beautiful theater. Skanking. And 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 uh, They Might Be giants Uh It was a, a beautiful, beautiful, wondrous time. Incredible. Did you go to Monty's Blue Paint next door? Monty's. I did not go to Monty's Blue Paint. That sounds Blue like Paint. a D's Nuts setup. No, there's a there's like a famous diner across the street from the Barrymore called Monty's Blue Plate. Oh, okay. Oh, Blue Plate, not Blue Paint. No, no, there's Blue... I believe it's Blue, so they probably did use Monty's Blue Paint when establishing it. <laughs> uh, George Lucas with 100 biddies. Thank you so much. Jack to stream Lies of P in 2024. My favorite game of the year. I, I, I do want to play it. What what my plan is, what my very 
tenuous plan that I will give up on, uh, given any resistance. Because I was gifted Baldur's Gate 3, uh, with this week off, I'm going to try to catch up on some movies, and I'm going to play as much Baldur's Gate 3 as I can. That's great. That's my tenuous plan, because I, you know, people love it. People love uh, love a Baldi's Gate, and I want to I want to understand the love. And so that is my plan. So I will not get to Lies of P anytime soon. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it seems like the world is split in twain, where we, you know, with half Lies of P, half Lords of the Fallen. So I feel like I need to rep Lords of the Fallen harder. Sure. But, but maybe you could be the one to bridge that. Like oh. you could be the lover of both. Maybe yeah, I could. Uniter. I could. Yeah. I, uh, Lives of P looks amazing. I've I've watched some uh, some of my favorite Souls streamers have done uh, challenge runs of mm -hmm. uh, Lives of P, which it looks fun. The enemies look great. I don't want to look at Timothy Chalamet for that long. Is sure. is my real thing? So I'm gonna need a donkey mask like Toot Sweet. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's my that's my personal feelings. Get walk out of my fucking game. I don't. I just don't, you know. I, I don't want to watch Wonka. I don't want to watch Lies of P. <laughs> I don't understand why why P had to be so sexy. Yeah, why? Why? I understand why they like didn't have you be able to because you know like Sekiro, it's it is a bespoke character. Yeah. So, so you can't be changing how they look. I, I get that, but like, why did he have to look like that? Why did he have to look like that? It's weird. It's yeah. weird for me. Uh, uh, Lampy yeah. with 100 bits says, Jack, here's $1 to not play Baldur's Gate 3. <laughs> I, we should like start a bidding war for both sides. Ooh, there you go. No, I want, you know, I, I enjoy the role playing games. I enjoy mm -hmm. the Dungeons and Dragons. On paper, uh, Baldur's Gate 3 is a game I will enjoy. I, I have my reservations, uh, which I've talked about before, which is that, like, that's the mechanics isn't why I play Dungeons and Dragons. And so I'm mm -hmm. uh, very concerned that it's going to focus more on the mechanics than it will on the role play. But it's a big old we'll see. And I, someone mm -hmm. gifted it to me. I get to play it for free. I, I might as well check it out. It would be irresponsible of you not to. It would be irresponsible of me not to. Uh, uh, da, da, da. Humane Shield with a four ninety nine dono. Thank you so much, Humane Shield. If you feed a Mogwai after midnight, it turns into a gremlin. So mm -hmm. does that mean if you feed a gremlin in the afternoon, it should turn back into a Mogwai, right? Uh, if we look at the metamorphosis process, uh, it seems pretty one directional. Hmm. Like, they, remember, they had little pods that they went into. Like, you can, a, yeah. a butterfly can't turn back into a worm. Yeah. the Yeah, that is true. The weird thing, though, is that, like, do they, like, observe daylight savings time? Like, what if they're in Indiana or Arizona, which were, like, oh, two states yeah. where, like, daylight savings time is kind of weird? No, it breaks down real fast as soon as, like, after midnight is such a subjective thing. Sure. Yeah, it's just one of those things that's probably better not to think about. Oh, 100%. Just, but do what the mom does in that movie and just throw one of those gremlins in the microwave. 100%. Also that, 100%. Yes. Throw them gremlins in the microwave. Yeah. Uh, and then Alaric with a $5 dono. Thank you so much, Alaric. Great to see you, Jack. This stream, the Last of Us finale, and some good antibiotics are just the medicine I need to get over a holiday <laughs> ear infection. Oh. oh, no. Ear infections fucking suck. Ear infections do suck. I'm so sorry. Especially hot, like you know any any sort of illness during the holidays, you're just like, come on, let me let me have a day here, let me have a day where everything is nice. Cruelty, genuine cruelty. cruelty. Yeah, no, that's a problem with Mogwais. I know, like, we uh, as part of our, our family Christmas time, we watched uh, you know some holiday movies, and while whilst Home Alones are you know undoubtedly holiday classics, mm -hmm. there 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 does hit a certain point where you're like, that is just a bad mom. Like, I'm sorry. Yeah. You are yeah. a, a objectively bad parent. Yeah. Also, do you not have, like, you don't have friends or relatives in the, like, Chicago Tri-County area? That you not call everyone has a support kids? system. Yeah, rich people do. <laughs> rich people do. But <laughs> also, remember, all of their rich friends were also on vacation. Also, yeah, yeah. So, 
so that makes sense. The the thing that always gets me, the thing that I love, and I is headcanon for me, is that the creepy old neighbor mm-hmm. is actually the the salt shovel killer. Yeah, because uh, he rescues Kevin from the burglars. The cops come to arrest the burglars, and this elderly neighbor is okay not talking to the police and not telling them that a child was involved. Yep, yep. He just like, oop, got a skadoodle. Got a skadoodle, which means that he doesn't want to be involved with the cops, which means yeah. that he's got a past. And that argument that he had with his son where they stopped talking, yep. it was the son saying, Dad, you need to stop being a serial killer. And him saying, counterpoint, son, I love the serial killing. <laughs> I love the serial killing. Yeah. You know, it's possible that he was like, my, my thought, and you know, like if we want to expound on the theories, which we always should, is that uh, you know, the, is we also don't know what the parents do for a wor- do for work in Home Alone. They are yeah. obviously well off. Sure. Yeah. Um, the dad could very well be a lawyer. What if the dad is a mob lawyer? Oh my God! For a Chicago crime family. That'd and not the shovel killer was a hitman. Oh, that'd be a good hitman. Kills everyone with a shovel. I mean, I don't know if that's good hit manning. He kills everyone with a shovel. Mm -hmm. And, uh, oh oh, no, might have been a bad time to drink an Estes? No, it wasn't. Okay, great. Never Uh, a bad time to drink an Estes. That's not true. There's many bad times to drink an Estes. Yes. So now uh, the the shovel killer is a mob hitman. Mm -hmm. And and he wanted to. Oh my god, am I going to win this first try? Oh my god. I I, I won a quail egg first try. Nice. Incredible. Quayleg versus Stick. Stick wins. Uh, that's be- one of. <laughs> All right, that's easy. All right, that's an yeah. easy fight. Uh, so the dad, you know, helped uh, is helping this mob family, and the the real fight was that the father wanted to stop being in the mob, and the son uh, didn't understand the ramifications. Where he's like, Dad, you can't. Uh, you can't quit your job. Like, you know, you have to feed us. And he's like, no, I have plenty yeah. of money. And the son didn't realize that the dad was quitting a job of killing people. Sure, sure. But you can't tell that to your kid because then he's not going to have your light around your grandkid again. Exactly. You got blood under those fingernails. Exactly. And so, like, that was also his redemption arc there is, like, telling the son, like, uh, about his past and, uh, you know, that, that little redemption. So. Oh, that's great. Yeah, an SVS guru with a five year old dono says, and Kevin grew up to be a hitman too, specializing in creative kills. Yeah, there's the, the theory that he grows up to be Jigsaw, <laughs> which totally checks out. <laughs> right? Uh, Lambie with 100 bits says, Marty, you hitman killed someone with a shovel just the other day. That is true. On stream, I was playing Hitman 3, which has, around the holiday season, they take one level which takes place, it's like a fashion show in Paris. Yeah. And they completely Christmasize it. So they put like Christmas trees and Christmas dialogue and snows falling and everything. There's presents everywhere. Yeah. And the people you need to kill are there's the two wet bandits running around stealing a bunch of shit from the mansion. Shut and you need up. to kill and they're named Harry and Marv. Uh, and I killed one of them with a shovel. That's I think I might have killed both of them with a shovel. Yeah. That's beautiful. That's beautiful and I love it. Good. It's good stuff. That's good stuff. And uh, Keeper Day, 100 bits as well. Thank you so much. Well done on Quail Egg. Huh? Huh? A little Quilog Quail Egg. Yeah. I like it. An invisible wall. As I live and breathe. What a game. I don't know if anyone's ever said this before. Dark Souls, pretty good. Pretty good game, right? Good yeah, a lot of people, a lot of people, uh, I know, unpopular opinion, but Dark Souls, pretty good. Oh. Good oh, shit. Did I answer the wrong thing? Damn it. <laughs> well, I'll just well, kill him later. I'll just kill him later. I'll just kill him later. You know what? Fuck it. I'm going to kill him now. I don't need you. Uh, oh, and Aaron, no, I didn't have uh, Kofi open. Uh, apologies there. But Aaron, thank you so much with uh, the dono over on Kofi. Meowy Christmas. A little oh. cat emoji. It's like Merry Christmas, but with meows. Well, his little wormy friends killed me. Isn't that nice? <laughs> <laughs> I killed him. His worms killed me. That's great. There you go. Perfect. There you go. I could have quit and reload, but I wanted to kill him. I've never actually killed him. I've never actually killed yeah. him because you can kill him and then you can kill the sister to get another firekeeper soul. So it's like, eh. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Just wanted to, I just wanted to see. There I wanted to see what happened. And uh, what happens is you die. 
So, <laughs> so there you go. Uh, I don't know why I'm still playing because it's Dark Souls, and I just fucking love Dark Souls. That's why I'm still. Pretty playing. good game, Miyazaki. You 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 you're onto something. <laughs> just keep at it. Let me just get. I'll just get to this fire here, and then we can uh, call it a stream. Perfect. A hearty, hearty three and a half hour Dark Souls stream on okay. this happy hollow days. Filled my Christmas time with joy. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah and like we mentioned earlier, uh, the uh, next Second Wind stream will be Thursday evening, 6 mm -hmm. p.m. Central. Uh, Jesse, Jess, Will, and Elise will be playing Dead by Daylight, HBD, DBD. Demand Chucky in the chat. Just refuse to watch until they present you with Chucky. Yes. Chucky, the small boy doll. Not a cute name for a ground beef. No, no, and not mm. not a, not Chucky Finster of of Rugrats fame. Can you can you take that beef and grind it up? I like mine a little Chucky. <laughs> oh my God, that's why I go, I go to restaurants. I'm like, yeah, you Chucky on the menu. Look, looking looking for a little for, Chucky. Say, sir, you need pants to be in this establishment. Mm, flap, 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 flap. Oh no, what was that? That was you flapping your peen. Oh, that's what that was. <laughs> That was you. I watched the film Saltburn the other day. <laughs> have you ever heard of the film Saltburn? I have not heard of the film Salt. Do they flat peen in Saltburn? They do. It's from oh, the right. writer and director of Promising Young Woman, new film starring oh. Barry Keon. I Barry do like Prom Promising Young Woman is a fantastic film. Check this one out. It's on Amazon Prime. Barry Keon and uh, uh, Jacob Alordi okay. plays Elvis in the new Priscilla movie. Oh. I'm not going to spoil it, though. There's some great peen in that movie. Some great peen. Great peen Does and it's it flop. It's floppy. So does it follow my rule of uh, of floppy dong equals quality entertainment? I mean, right now, yeah. Because doesn't uh, Blue Eye Samurai have floppy dong? That's, this is my, my. I'm working on a new theory that the more uh, the the larger amount of floppy dong in your uh, in your movie or TV show, the higher quality it is. Oh, I can't light that bonfire. Right. Easter promises. Great. Eastern Promises, um, uh, 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 The Suicide Squad. Oh, great dunk. Blue Eye Samurai. Uh, yeah. Uh, plus, uh, a, a honestly a remarkable amount of floppy dong. I was not expecting that much floppy dong in Blue Eye Samurai, which is, by the way, mm -hmm. a wonderful, uh, overall, a wonderful series. Uh, uh, with uh, with one remarkable thing to talk about, but I won't say as it uh, has to do with the ending of it. Mm. So I will wait until more people have a, an opportunity to watch it because I really want to talk about the ending. Uh, so I am waiting because maybe maybe in the new year we'll have some sort of an entertainment show what? where we can get on on a regular basis and talk what? about things like this and kind of say, hey, listen, we're gonna be doing some spoiler talk, so tune out. If you haven't watched it yet, that doesn't seem. That seems like something I would very much enjoy doing. That we don't. You know who yet else would, lo like would love talking about floppy dong? Who's is that? Darren Mooney. Darren Mooney Darren does Mooney. love talking about floppy dong in general. Oh my but god! But specifically when it comes to floppy dong in visual audio media. Mm -hmm. Interesting. I think like we should yeah. all just stay tuned. We should Might all be just with stay tuned. It's how much floppy dong in uh, season four of Adventures Nijack? We listen. We can't spoil. Season four. We can't spoil season four. What I will say is it was blurred out, but season two did have Floppy Dong. The pl the plant people in season two were oh, yeah. fully nude and blurred out dong. And side <laughs> quest two also had Floppy Dong. Yeah. Think uh, about again it. a mark of quality. Mark of quality. The mark of quality is floppy floppy dong. <laughs> uh <laughs> What it really is is like it's not necessarily floppy dong, but it, uh, stark nudity, nudity that sure. is not meant to be sexualized, mm -hmm. but you know, visual representation of uh, vulnerability, of uh, of you know, humanity or whatever, life, uh, death, whatever it is, is like just n nudity that is not meant to be sexy. That's yeah. the thing. Uh, Blue eyed samurai, so good. Yeah. So good. Overall. Sometimes we're just naked. Sometimes we're just naked. Sometimes we just get naked, y'all. Uh, hey, everybody! Thanks for coming out to Happy Hollow Days stream. Thank you, Marty, for joining me this morning. My absolute pleasure, and thank you, Pure, Py Pure Pyro, with a two-euro dono. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. You're great. Absolutely. You Happy Holidays to, great. 
to all of you, uh, whatever you celebrate, or if you don't celebrate anything, just happy uh, everyone gets a day off. There you go. So <laughs> happy end of the year. Happy end of the year. New yeah. Year's coming up. Um, great. I hope uh, I hope you all had a wonderful time. Wait, where's my where's my OBS now? Oh, here it is. It was it was hiding under the game, uh, so that I can end the year right. <laughs>